Hur kom jag på trap sons 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 trap uh, we have Vince Pichel in studio. He's running a little late. And I got the uh, the OG crew back. I got Joe the Kid Perez. Or no, uh, Ween Dog. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Ween Dog is back. A lot of people are very interested in your in your sex life since last week. Um, well, not, it, not much has happened in a week, but I have some stuff we could talk about. Awesome. Little. As well as CB Gold. What's up, guys? You're, uh, you, yeah, now, this mohawk you have going on, it looks kind of cool, but then like... On top, it looks like there's like moss or it's something on it. Tips. Or, is that, is that it's what it blonde. is? It's blonde. It's blonde? That, yeah, that's on purpose. I blonde. I bleached my whole head probably like two months ago. Yep. And now I'm doing the mohawk for the next like year. Yeah. All right. And then you also got a cyborg tattoo. Yes, I did. That you designed yourself. Yes, I did. Uh, and why did you do this? Um. I don't really have an answer to that. I'm a huge, I, I mean, I'm a huge cyborg fan, and you know, she was fighting at 219. I got excited, and uh, I become. Somewhat decent friends with Ray, her right, man. Right. So, yeah, did anybody from Jack, Jackson Winklejohn comment like oh, that's a nice tattoo of a guy you got, or uh, like that asshole who did? No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, but I was, uh, I was with Jason Perillo when he walked by Holly before the fight. And was like, "What's up, Holly?" And I'm just like, yeah, "You're kind of a dick." <laughs> Rip Perillo is why? No, just for like doing that. Like, "What's up, Holly?" Like, "Good well, luck." He, he I just be think nice. No, I know. I like Jason. Jason's a good dude. It was just funny because it was like in and out. Anyway, I want to thank our sponsor, Speedweed. Listen, people, if you live in California and you want your weed delivered, there's only one place to go, and that is Speedweed. You go to check out speedweed.com. Uh, they got the best topicals, vapes, marijuana, edibles, and more. Uh, speedweed.com. And listen, you know, I think it's so much better to get it delivered because you, know, you go to a dispensary, you got to run into people you know. Maybe maybe you run into your boss at work and he doesn't know that you, or you get drug tested and now he's like, oh, great, you look at you. Or maybe you run into somebody who wants your job and now they're going to report you. Or who knows? Who knows what the deal is? You know, this way you want to smoke, get it delivered to you. You don't even have to leave your house, your apartment. Speedweed.com. Mention Rose to get $10 off, orders $100 or, 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 or more. Now, uh, I don't know. I just got back from Pechanga. Uh, I had, man, stand up comedy is the most humbling thing in the world because Saturday night I do a show and, uh, you know, it was awesome. Uh, Joe Daddy Stevenson was there and oh, cool. Tom Galicchio showed up and, um, and Keith Berry showed up and, I, and Keith's girlfriend, Nicole Aniston, who's <laughs> like one of the hottest porn stars in the history of porn. Uh, and, <laughs> And I had the best set. So of course, there's a guy who heckles me, right? This one guy, this Latin guy, just kept talking during the feature set. And one of these guys who thinks he's helping, and the feature kind of just ignored him, but I was like, all right, I'll get him. And then I was talking about marijuana, and he's like, yeah, marijuana's legal now. And I'm like, yeah, it's more legal than you. And then everybody <laughs> went ballistic. But then he just kept going. But he was actually a nice guy. He was having fun. So, and then I, I, there were these two girls in the front, and I'm like, oh, are you guys together? And, and I could tell that one of them, uh, I could tell that they were lesbians, you know. Uh, no, they were not lesbians, but they looked like they might have. Who knows, right? So I go, you guys lesbians? And then... Uh, all of a sudden, these two grandmothers that were like with their husband start making out. Like they just start going at it. Wait, two grandmothers? Are we talking yeah. Mexican grandmothers? No, no, or? no, white. Like I heard they were librarians actually. And they stand up and just, and they were on dates with their husbands and they just start going at it. I mean, these girls must have been like 60 or 70 or maybe were even. Were they swingers? I don't, I'm sure there was something, but it was, <laughs> they weren't even the girls I was talking to. So then they got up and I was like, great, this is the Golden Girls Gone Wild and Sex in the City of Bethlehem. And, you know, this is a 69 by girls who are 69. I just, I kept going and it was, it was awesome. It was actually a really fun show, but I was not expecting that. So, you know, Saturday night, I'm, I'm, on, a, I'm on an all-time high and I'm like, yes, this is great. And then Sunday comes along and they just start doing comedy there Sundays. No promotion. Ten people show up. And it's just ten people in a room that holds 200. Mm -hmm. And they're all sitting way spaced out. Two of them were M.A. Rosa fans, actually. These two, this, uh, this, this cool Latin couple. But it was just like, what a... And then Monday, I'm back at the Dime Bar. It's just such a... And, and the Dime Bar was okay, but it was raining out in L.A. And when it rains in L.A., it's like a blizzard somewhere else. People mm -hmm. just don't go out. And, of course, the national championship's on. And, of course, it goes to overtime. So that cut into the whole show. But it was still, it was still a good show. It was a fun show. 
But uh, tonight, actually, Tyron Woodley is performing. Last night, Eve Edwards went on. It was the second time ever doing comedy, and he's actually getting really good. He, he's, he's smart, and he's smart, and he listens, and he's humble, and, he's, and, tonight, and all of a sudden, T. Wood hits me up, and he's like, I was like, hey, man, are you in L.A.? Because I, you know, I got coaching wrestling, and I thought maybe he can come talk to the kids or something. It'd be kind of cool. I bring in fighters all the time. And, he's just, and he goes, I want to do stand-up comedy. Um, I'm like, all right. Like, I'm not going to say no to that. Like, uh, when do you want, you want to go up on Tuesday? He's like, he's like, I'm in. So now tonight is the stand-up comedy debut of Tyron Woodley at the Dime Bar. You got to FaceTime Colby Covington and have him like in the audience. Heckling like, the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Plug him into the DJ booth so you hear it over the loudspeaker. Uh, pe- pe- people were already making jokes. They're like, yeah, he- he's going to tell one joke every 25 minutes. Or, like, <laughs> but whatever. I don't care. Look, I don't know why he's doing it, but I, the guy's got balls of steel. This is his first time? First time, and I give him a lot of credit. And the guy, you know, maybe he's thinking after fighting or he, something he wants to do or he needs help with auditioning or somebody he I, I don't know I, I know he has a thing on TMZ but I give him a lot of credit and uh, I'm excited to do comedy with Tyron well, how cool is that I got the UFC champion currently doing stand up comedy you've had a couple UFC champs go through the dime bar you had Bisping right yeah but they didn't go up on stage and tell jokes <laughs> uh, Bisping selling jokes would be kind of funny Bisping would be he would be funny you know I think a lot of times I mean the reason I got into comedy was I'm like, I want to get into entertainment and I know I could be good at something that I have to rely on myself, like wrestling. So let's do it. You know, let's uh, let's 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 see how we, how we can do. And that's why I got into comedy. So I think a lot of fighters, you're up there by yourself, and you're your own worst enemy and your own biggest. You know, so fuck it. I, I think it's great. I'm I'm excited for it. Are you let him do like five minutes, ten minutes? He's doing ten minutes tonight. Um, but uh, it'd be funny if guys like if I gave out Colby Covington T-shirts to everybody, everyone's wearing Colby Covington T-shirts. <laughs> but but already I like posted on on Instagram and Colby writes, Tyron's got no jokes. He is a joke. <laughs> Colby is like, he's on a fire, dude. He's on. I I heard he's coaching the Ultimate Fighter against Tyron. I hope that's the case. That'd be I, awesome. Oh God, I I would that would be much must watch TV. I mean, yeah. that, would, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. So, uh, by the way, so I did a, a sit-down interview with Tom Galicchio last week. Everyone seems to like it. I did one with Jay Haran. Uh, when I'm on the road now, that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I'm doing one with David Michaud on Friday. The Bulldog, uh, who's also in Titan FC. Or uh, he's in some, or Legacy. I think he's in Legacy now. And then also... Is Her Many Horses going to be there? Yes, his, his girlfriend. Emma Her Many Horses, which I think is the greatest last name of all time. And, and then also... Uh, Sunday, I'm doing one with uh, Lauren, Lauren Murphy. So I like these, like these, like kind of like a in-depth interviews mm-hmm. with people. Get and, Mackenzie uh, Dern to join Lauren Murphy. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, I know that uh, she's coming to the show, Lauren, with Courtney Casey. That was uh, I, I like Courtney Casey's hot. And uh, when she gave Felice Herring the uh, the uh, double fingers during their fight, that was pretty damn cool. So. Greg busted in his pants when that happened. Who did? Greg. Oh, Greg, yeah, Greg, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to make a joke, but I want to see this girl's finger yourself, but not like this, or something like that. But anyway, so let's talk about the fights this week. This Sunday night, uh, there's some good fights coming up. I'm excited. Actually, mm. it's a good card. I like Sunday cards. I like random cards on mm. Sunday. They just come um, out of nowhere, dude. It's like, what, Sunday? Wait, whatever happened to that one fight that was supposed to happen last week between the, oh, the yes. girl yeah, and Yeah, speaking of which, right, yeah. Right. So I guess what had happened was the girl... Tara La Rosa flew to Florida uh-huh. to fight this internet troll who's also a comedian. Go figure. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not I, surprised. And I say comedian. I mean, you know, he did like he didn't seem much of a comedian, but so he he the the police shut it down. Are you serious? The police went to the gym. Out of all the things in Florida, the police should be shutting down. Like the guy who you know face biting Kimbo's and, entire career. Uh, yeah, all the backyard fighting. <laughs> um, uh, Zimmerman was in Florida. Uh, all the, all these things like this, a fucking internet troll getting beat up by Tara. Like they shut this down. Come on. Was it just supposed to be like a sparring match? Yeah. And they both agreed to it. Yes. So what's illegal? I don't know. I Maybe don't. They might have thought there's money involved or something. I don't know what there was money involved. They had like six thousand dollars of GoFundMe money. Oh. That, like they raised for it. And yet Josh Neer was allowed to kick the shit out of some dude in Iowa at his gym just because I, yeah. of an internet call out. It's so stupid. It, it's so <laughs> stupid. So um, what's going on with you, Joe, by the way, before we get to the fights? Any, uh, any, any new chicks? What's going on? 
Uh, I just broke up with a girlfriend that I've been dating for a few months. Um, <laughs> no, it's not no big deal. There's nothing crazy over there. But that nobody knew what was wait, happening. Wait, did she know she was your girlfriend? <laughs> I mean, we haven't really like discussed and said that. Like, oh, you want to be my girlfriend? Want to be my boyfriend? It was just we were just dating. You know, you know, we, we had a lot of made a lot of love. This, I've never been with a girl where I've made love with her like ten times, dude. You ever okay. had that? You, wait, you made love with her ten times? Yeah, I've always nine of them. She was sleeping. So. Uh, <laughs> No, but I've never been with like one girl continuously like this bef- like before. But uh, we just called things off. It was you know she kind of lives kind of far, um, so it's no big deal. But luckily, I just matched with somebody on Tinder like, a few days. Wait, ago. hold on, slow down. So, a girl that you weren't really dating, you broke up with. Yeah. Okay, that doesn't count as break. How did you tell her you? you had, <laughs> but you weren't really dating her. Well, you know what? The reason we broke up is because like. When we first started dating, the first week, she saw on my Instagram that I had commented on that girl from Germany's post. When she, right. Because she, she visited California. All I did was type welcome on her picture. That's it. Yeah. I wasn't trying to start a conversation, and she freaked out, dude. What? She's like, oh, my God, you're trying to get back together with your old girlfriend, who I've only talked to her for like a month, that Germ- the girl from Germany. And you just wrote welcome? I just wrote welcome on her Instagram. She freaked out. How did she know that you wrote welcome on it? I have no idea, dude. I didn't know you could see people's comments on Instagram. Like, you, you sleep can. with you your phone under your pillow? Yeah. You can? Yeah. So I was like, she just kept bringing it up. She's like, I don't know if I can trust you anymore. Uh, I'm like, so I'm thinking, like, you know, this might be a crazy bitch. Yeah. You know, so I just I got out of that as soon How as How did I you could. break up with her? I just texted her. I'm like, yo, I don't think it's going to work out, dude. You said Ran dude. away? Well, no, I didn't say dude. I was, that's basically what I said. It's not really going to work out because I feel like she th- always constantly thinks that I'm a bad person, even though I have no bad intentions. I would never cheat on her, even though I kind of did because I slept with a Filipino girl. Yeah, so you, you did cheat on her. I mean, well, because we never were officially boyfriend and girlfriend. How, okay, how, how many times have you slept with her? Uh, Probably like 10 times. Oh, nice. Yeah. Were you in love? I mean, I wouldn't say that. Maybe in the beginning, I heard some emotions, but... It's just hard for me because the longer I stay with someone, the more things I notice about them that I don't really particularly like. Like know? what? Like, I don't know, this girl, I mean, she just has some weird old titties, dude. Like, her titties are just weird. Well, how? Well, they're kind of like my titties. They're like funnel, <laughs> like, you know, like, I mean, they're just, I don't know. What, like they were like flat? <laughs> they're like torpedoes? Very, yeah, like little torpedoes, like funnel titties, you know. They were funnel titties? Yeah, but, you know. Did she wear bras from the 30s? <laughs> <laughs> no. Maybe the funniest thing you ever said. Uh, pl- no, <laughs> definitely Dada being a heavy bag was oh, yeah, the best line I've ever had. I don't know. Just don't talk the rest of the podcast. It's okay. All, it's all Later. downhill from here. All right. So that. Okay. So now. Um, all right. So. All right. So now, have you met someone else? Well, I haven't met her in person, yet, but we matched on Tinder. Okay. And she's the most beautiful girl I've ever seen in my life, dude. Is she's, it a girl? Oh, man, I, <laughs> I hope so, dude. Because she's beautiful. Have you spoke to her on the phone? No, not yet. But. <laughs> She says she wants me to go to church with her on Sunday. All right. And so I was you wondering, burn like, as soon as you walk wait, in. Wait, this is your first date at church? Yeah, that's what she oh, said. Oh, fuck that. Is dude. that kind of weird? Dude? Yeah. Because I'm like kind of weirded yeah, out. But she by could that. be a freak. Oh, right. Church girls that. could be freaks. Yeah, but the fir- as a first date? Well, she wants you to meet God. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, Anderson Silva today, uh, I wrote the joke. He says that he, he's going to stop fighting when God tells him not to. I like guess God's USADA. Is God, like, I was going to say, is God Vitor? Yeah, but, but what is that? Like, you can't get caught cheating twice and then say God doesn't want me to. What, what is going on with, uh, I don't understand this. Uh, but was he busted twice for steroids? Yes, right? Or they were boner pills? or what, What's going on? I don't even fucking know anymore. I can't keep up with USADA. Every day it's something new. It's. Yeah. I have no idea. And then you got to wait six months to find out what the hell they tested positive for. And that brings, that opens Pandora's box all over again. Yeah, what's the name was saying that uh, uh, Galicio said that Jesse Taylor tested positive. He went to go see some witch doctor, some spiritual healer chick, and ended up testing positive for some type of like female fertility drug. Like something that like if a chick's trying to get pregnant, it, that's what she takes. And, and then, what would that do for a guy? Uh, yeah, he, uh, right. It's so stupid. They got. I really don't understand. They got to get back. They got to get off. There's got to be something better than Usada. There has to be something better. I mean, what are they using boxing? Boxing. They have people get positive for steroids all the time. It doesn't seem like they have these weird things though. I don't, I don't know. fucking know. Anyway, I'm calling Michael Johnson right now. Uh, I I think I screwed up and told him the wrong time. Um, <clears throat> but uh, remind me later. There we go. So we got. Ho- hopefully he picks up. So, uh, anyway, we're waiting for Vince Pichel. By the way, all you guys complaining about the, the, the uh, new song. Uh, the new song is, I met a friend in Mongolia who's a comedian mm-hmm. who used to be in a rap group. And it's the biggest rap group in Mongolia. 
And that's the song. Uh, so I and like how it. many rap groups it's are one. in Magnolia? Oh, oh. Three. Okay. How many rap groups are in Mongolia? I don't know, but they're, they're, they're the biggest. And, uh, and I, I happen to like that song. It, it gets me pumped up. I know some of you guys don't I've like it. I've never heard it. Oh, oh, I think it's a good song. Um, it's pretty, what do you know the actual name of it so people can listen to it in its entirety? Uh, Shazam that shit. Yeah, Shazam that shit. Yeah, you could Shazam that shit, but but I do know it's uh but I, I have to find it. Anyway, uh let's see if Michael Johnson's gonna yeah. pick up. Hey Yeah, Sip that that was his name. Sip with that from Our, Tropic Thunder. Hey Adam, what's up? What's up, Michael Johnson? How you doing, man? Good, good. Hey. I'm, I'm I'm so happy. Uh, thank you for uh, calling on the, on the phone. Pick up the phone. I know you got a huge fight this Sunday night uh, or Sunday during the day, whatever it is, against Darren Elkins. Man, I'm looking forward to this fight. You know what's funny? When, when I heard this fight was announced, I thought this was the main event. I'm like, oh, this is a great main event. Elkins Johnson, and now I'm finding out you guys are on the prelims. Like, what's up with that? <laughs> I know, right? Thank you. Exactly what I'm thinking. I'm thinking like, well, we got a card in St. Louis. Of course, I'm going to be the main event. Yeah, I mean, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't think too much of it, man. It, it, it's a little BS, you know. But at the same time, I'm coming to St. Louis for war, so that's all I got to worry about. I mean, it's going to be uh, the thing about Elkins. About him, though, man, you got to give it to Elkins. The guy never quits. I was at one of his fights when he fought um, the dude from, uh, from Europe. Uh, Mursad Bektik. Yeah, Mursad Bektik. Mursad Bektik. And Mursad yeah. Bektik was beating the shit out of this dude for, I mean, just they almost stopped the fight in, in the first round. Then the second round, and Elkins just comes out of nowhere. I mean, how do you prepare for a guy like this? Yeah, um, I just fought a guy like that. You, you know, in a way, so, man, I've been preparing for these guys pretty much uh, all career. You know, Justin... It was a different story. You know, I'm not comparing the two, but uh, they were just the same. You know, they don't quit at all. Like, you have to go in there and uh, find a way to kill them and stop them. And that's when I went back to the John board and uh, prepared to do this fight. Now, that fight with, with Gaethje, that was a war. And you know what? Going to that fight, I'm like, you know, Michael Johnson can win this fight as long as he doesn't get sucked into a war. Uh, but, but at the same time, I know Michael Johnson... He's got that, he's a tough guy, he's a stubborn guy, and he might be the kind of guy that's like, fuck it, let's just go punch for punch. Do you look back and think, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have done that? Well, no, you know, um, that, was, that wasn't my initial plan, but hell, like I said, it was um, the fight, and that could have continued, you know. Um, and then I took, a, I took a pretty bad headbutt in that first round of that fight, and that kind of stalled me out a little bit of my movement for me not moving around and it took me a while to kind of find my head back and get my gears in that fight so um i was pretty much fighting eight minutes like on air you know just off of fumes and off of instinct so when you're fighting like that and you get headbutted do you know where you are are you seeing double are you lightheaded i have no idea man next thing i know we were I was in the middle of the cage with him, and next thing I know, I'm my back's against the cage, and, uh, and you know, I'm just trying to, like, find my legs, and I'm trying to, like, see where he's at at the same time. There's just so much going on, and, you know, and a lesser fighter would have stopped and took a pause, but, you know, um, that, that's not me. You know, I took the head button, I, like I said, and he pounced on me right away, so, um, you know, I, I'm not one to, you know, stop the fight or take a timeout. No, nobody will ever question your heart. Now, do you, uh, were you surprised that Eddie Alvarez was able to beat Justin Gaethje? No, I wasn't surprised at all. Um, you know, they were, they had been the most violent man between those two guys or whatever. And um, I knew that Eddie was going to um, put it on him like that. Man, I've trained with Eddie so many years and talk about one guy that doesn't quit and has the biggest heart in the world. You know, you're looking at him right there. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's awesome. Now, another fight that everyone talks about was your fight with Khabib. That was a fight you were winning the striking, and I think a lot of people, when they think of Khabib and they think about how he might lose to Conor McGregor, they look at your fight with Khabib and go, well, Michael Johnson hurt him, Michael Johnson was beating him, and if Conor McGregor can do that to him, what are your thoughts about McGregor versus Khabib? Um, I, I see that as the same way. Um, as long as Connor stays away from him and doesn't go to the ground, um, you know, he'll be in good shape. 
Uh, that was the issue of mine. You know, um, uh, I got a little bit too uncomfortable in that fight, and I just uh, let him get a hold of me. But, you know, that's exactly how I see it going. Connor can get the win, but he needs to stay off the ground. Like, if he goes to the ground with that guy, there's no coming back. Now, the thing about Khabib, because uh, you're a college wrestler. You're, you're a very good wrestler. Uh, and, but Khabib, when he grabbed you, it was like, did he have, like, gorilla strength? Was it, have you ever been kind of... Yeah. Manhandled like that before? I've, I've, I've never been, I've never been like held down like that. It wasn't so much as his grip, it was more of his pressure. You know, um, I, it's just when he gets uh, his pressure and those hands locked, um, then it's a different story. You know, um, he took a few shots at me and I just threw him aside and kind of got out of the way, but he just kept going to his relentless thing. So, um, you know, his takedowns from like shooting aren't as good as what people think. It's just when he gets that body lock and he gets on top of you, um, it's like a it's like a two o five er. Wow, it's like a two o five er. That's I mean, like that's the thing with Khabib and Connor. I'm like, you know what? I'll, I'm going to be rooting for Khabib if they fight, but I do worry that his head is straight up. He just and he, and he walks forward, and Connor hits so fucking hard that I do kind of wonder if he's kind of tailor-made for him in some ways. Yeah, yeah, uh, I can see that as well, but um, Khabib can take a punch. You know, my, I didn't have all my weight behind the, tag, the, the times I tagged him, you know, because I was kind of looking for him to shoot on me, so I wasn't, you know, fully comfortable. But, uh, yeah, that's a credible fight. I, I hope it happens, but like we all say, and we all know that's a big if. A big and Connor picks his fights very well, and he knows who's dangerous and who's not. And Khabib is a very dangerous guy. No, I, I, I could see him fighting Tony before he fights Khabib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I hear you. I would love to see it though. Um, now, when when he was on top of you and he was talking to you and he was like, "Sir, you must quit. It is my time." Like, what were you thinking? Like, is this guy out of his fucking mind? Yeah, yeah, thank exactly. you. Um, you know, I wasn't even um, thinking or paying attention to it. You know, um, we're going back and forth. He said something like, oh, just quit. And I think I said, fuck you. I'm not going anywhere. And I kind of smacked <laughs> him back a little bit and trying to get up. So, um, you know, it was funny. Um, it was kind of funny to me. But, um, you know, you can tell that, you know, he had a lot of frustration and let out. Well, I mean, look, I mean, some of your wins, I mean, you not, when you knocked out Dustin Poirier, you know, I called up... Uh, I, I called up uh, Rashad Evans because I was gonna. I actually put money on you for that fight. I'm, I was like Rashad, how does? Uh, actually, I didn't put money on you. I put money on nobody because I was like Rashad, how's uh, uh, how's Michael Johnson look? He's like, as long as he does what he what he's supposed to do, he's gonna he's gonna win. And then I called up uh, Dean Thomas, and he goes, Dustin Poirier is close to 100 percent of a lock that you'll ever see in sports. And I'm like, oh, gee, all right, now I'm not betting. But I mean. When you knocked out Poirier, was that, you think, one of your career highlights? Was that just the, the most amazing feeling in the world? Um, it was definitely a career highlight for me because it was um, a first-round knockout in a big main event against a guy that was climbing the ranks and lightweight and, uh, and it's been around forever. And um, it's just incredible. You know, so that was definitely one of my highlights. But um, I was very confident going into that fight. And um, I knew we were going to come out with a win. You know, I've had bigger fights in my career, but um, not too many big victories like that one. That was a big one. Oh, that was, that, that was a great fight. Now, after that fight, um, did you have a girlfriend? Did you get tons of chicks, threesomes? What happened? <laughs> no, uh, no, no threesomes or anything like that. You know, I still, I still got my girl. We were still together. And, um, nice. you know, so she gave me some loving. But mm. the, the nice, sensual... Loving you get from your girlfriend, you know. How long you have? Uh, you're a married man, though. I forgot. I know, dude. I know. That's why I have to live vicariously through you, bro. I, I have to like. Uh, I'm over. I'm done. I mean, I don't. I mean, I got laid last night, but I, you know, I get laid when I want to get laid. You know, versus uh, when I can get laid. Uh, sometimes, like the chase. Uh, forget me. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, now, how long have you had this girlfriend for? Uh, man, it's been a long, long time, man, for about, uh, going on seven years almost, wow. seven years. So. How, now, does she want you to get married? Yeah, it's talks about it. It's talks about marriage, talks about kids and everything like that. And, um, they, you know, I'm sure we'll take that step pretty soon. What but, do you mean um, there's talks about it? What, 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 man, what, what, I don't know. I don't know how you marry guys do it. You know, the one thing I hear 
the one common thing I hear from every married guy, and you probably probably have heard this before you got married. They all look at me with a straight face and go, don't do it. The, those guys are... And, and no. always looking at them like, like, what the fuck are you telling me don't do it for? Why do you do it then? Like, I don't get it. Look, here's look. Those guys had... Look, a lot of times guys get married before they're successful or before they're good at something. Then they get successful and they go, oh shit, I could be fucking all these chicks right now. What you got... As, as long as you get enough pussy before you're married, like... You're okay. Like sometimes when I when I when I can't sleep, I'll count women that I, I bang. <laughs> you know, like they, they're all they're all humping over a fence. The Mexicans are jumping higher. Okay, but 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 oh but, but I'm saying, but that's of course they do. But that's what you got to do. You got to make sure that it's out of your system. Uh, so as and I know you. Look, you're a college athlete. You're a high school football phenom. You you lived in Florida. You got all the Cuban chicks. You probably got it out of your system, right? It's getting there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's getting okay. That's good. Well, good. Now, Nate Diaz. How much shit did Nate talk during your fight? Uh, you know, he didn't talk that much shit. You know, he was pointing and and, and doing his little clowning around and whatnot. But um, you know, I, I lost track in that fight as well. That was another one. But uh, yeah, he's a little shit talker. And whenever he's gonna fight again, that's the fight that I want back. Was was it was he cool with you after I'll the, let him get away. Was he cool after the fight with you? Were you were you guys cool afterwards? Yeah, yeah, we were cool afterwards. We sat and talked to the back and he uh he told me a crazy story about how my brother was about to uh whoop him and his uh or his whole little entourage. My brother saw him in the lobby or something like that. <laughs> hey, my brother's this is huge as fucking like six three, like two fifty pound dude so you know he told me that story in the back and we laughed about it so um wait you know, hold on wait cool. what's this wait your brother is your, is your brother an athlete is he a fighter no no he used to uh do some sports back in the day but uh no he did not anything like that he was in the army for a little bit so now he's just um he just works and he's a dad six so, kids six <laughs> kids damn so he went up to nate diaz and was like don't fuck with my brother <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. He was he was in on that one. And and then what? And then what? I mean, Nate probably talked shit back, right? Or was did Nate actually back down from your brother? You know, I don't know. I, I don't know. You know, they probably all got separated. We didn't get that too deep into it. Damn, that's hilarious. Yeah, it was kind of a quick little conversation, like, "Oh, your bro is crazy," and I'm like, "Yeah, I know. Why do you think I'm so tough? That big ass <laughs> used to beat my ass." Almost every day when I was a kid. <laughs> but you look at the guys you fought, man. Joe Lozon, Gleason Tebow, Melvin Gallard, uh, Edson Barbosa. I mean, it's, you fought a who's who. I mean, there's, there's got to be no one in there that even gets you frustrated. And you beat all those guys, too. It wasn't like you just fought them. I mean, I mean Melvin Gallard, I thought, was probably the most talented fighter who didn't reach his potential in the octagon and not knocking him. But it just you talk about a guy with unlimited potential. You know, uh, the Joe Lozon fight, you kind of just, you made him, I mean, that was speed, right? Speed killed in that fight. Yeah, and, th and that's going to be the same thing this fight. You know, speed. Speed's going to kill. Uh, it's my first job to 45. I'm feeling good and strong, and um, he's going to have a hell of a time trying to find me. And, and I'm really focused because I can't fuck around and take too many of these uh, bullshit losses, you know, and be stuck in a situation as a guy having all this talent, but is just letting it slip through his fingers in a fight. And um, it could always be so cringeworthy to watch. Right, right. I mean, even like the Nate Diaz fight, I felt like you had that fight and then you got sucked into his game, right? Yeah, exactly. Perfect thing. You know, I let him, uh, you know, I kind of let him get in my head a little bit. And, um, and I was just sitting there waiting for a counter and then next thing I know the fight's over with and I'm like shit I really just let that slip through my fingers but I mean some of the guys you beat you, I mean you beat Tony Ferguson I think you would probably his last loss or something right and then you beat uh, you beat Shane Roller who's a fucking three time national champion uh, wrestler I mean your your resume is pretty insane dude uh, pretty insane. You fought James Krause in 2008 Bro, that's what I got into the sport for you know I got into the sport to fight the best of the best, you know, I'm, uh, and, the, you know, I was talking to, with somebody this the other day. There's only a handful of guys like myself left in the UFC, and those are guys that won't say no to a fight or not trying to pick and choose fights 
and want the toughest, baddest guy available. And, um, uh, you know, it's it, it getting really watered down and soft these days. Yeah, no, I will. I feel like a win uh, Sunday puts you right back in there. Now, I, I, I recently interviewed Kevin Lee, who, who said some things about you that was not very nice. What's up with you and Kevin Lee? <laughs> I saw that. I saw that shit. And you know what? This fucking dude is the... I, I, I'm not about to be like a little like a little fake tough guy like he is and talk shit through podcasts and microphones. But then when he sees me in my face, he's like, he's out of his seat smiling. Hey, what's up, buddy, buddy? Like you want to smile on my face? Like, and then go on the podcast and talk shit. Like, like it, it's really funny like that. You know, like, like we're not cool. Like, like we're not friends, but you want to be cordial when we're, when we're like out. Yeah, and you yeah. don't want to talk shit, and then I hear that you're talking shit. So I'm gonna have some words for him next time I see him. Well, don't so get we'll into see, a um, well, if, he, if he's well, no. got that big of a mouth. No, don't get into a street fight with Kevin Lee. You're, you're too good for that. You don't need to get into, suspended or break your hand or anything else. But him calling you a little bitch. Oh yeah, I want to do anything that. I just want to see if he's man enough to say what he's got to say behind my back to my face because well, it's funny because well, every time I see him he has nothing but nice <laughs> things to say and dick riding all the time well I don't see why he called you look I like Kevin a lot <laughs> Kevin's a good he's a good friend of mine but he called you a little bitch I'm like how do you call a guy who fights the baddest motherfuckers in the world and beats most of them a little bitch I mean I mean I mean that's not even close to a little bitch that's that's insane. I and mean, you're, you're you're like you're like the far as, on like the little bitch scale. You're like the farthest thing from a little bitch. I, I don't I don't understand. <laughs> I mean, if you're a little bitch, then I'm the greatest bitch of all time. I'm I'm just a huge gigantic <laughs> pussy. You know? uh, maybe he's I don't know. Who knows? You know, maybe he's got some infatuation with me because every time I look up, he's got something to say about me. You, you think he's jealous because uh, you know? I don't know, you, because you get hotter chicks than him or something, or, or, or that could be it. Or I'm the, or I'm the, you know, the, the best looking black dude in our area. Like I don't know. Like, we're, we're like, does he see competition with me? Like, like I don't, like I don't get it. Like, but is your is your girlfriend white, but, black, uh, Asian? She's uh, she's actually Macedonian, so Greek. Oh, I'm she's on the Greek. Greek side. Oh, nice. Now you go. So got that, uh, that, that like, olive complexion. Yeah, yeah. Do, do do the but, sisters get mad at yeah. you? <laughs> do, sometimes the sisters get mad at you on Instagram and be like, "Oh, you're a sellout. Or, Why you gotta be with a a white chick? Why can't you be with one of us?" Do they get mad at you? Nah, no, I haven't. Uh, I haven't got any of that in, in a while either. You know, I think the times are changing. I think they're just all used to it now. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Well, seven years is a long time. Now, what's up with Anthony Johnson? Uh, I had heard he was gonna owned the Rams, and, and then I heard he opened up a weed dispensary. I know he's, he was your teammate. Give us the Anthony Johnson update. Yeah, um, man, I wish I, had, I wish I had one for you, uh, man. The, the only update I have of AJ is, um, you know, he's living life and, and doing great. You know, I'm starting a new chapter in his life with his uh, weed business, I guess, and um, he's happy. <laughs> you know, I, I think that's where I, where I get the gist of it from. Have you been to his weed dispensary? I haven't seen him in a while. Have you been to his uh, dispensary? No, I have not been to his dispensary. Oh. I had a fight this weekend, but I'll, uh, I might check it out when I get back. Yeah, I, know, I, I heard like the marijuana hits hard for three minutes, but then you get tired. That's just what I, that's just the word on the street. And, uh, all right, that's a terrible joke. But listen, Michael Johnson, Michael Johnson. Oh, it hits hard for three minutes? Yeah, and then he get tired. And, uh, so, all right, listen, this, this is the fight, okay? Fuck the rest of this, this rest of this card. Except for, uh, Usman. I like Usman on the card, and, uh, who else do we like on this card? Uh, Do I, like, I like Jesse Jess. Oh. Jesse Jess is cool. But, uh, but, but, but you're the main event. This is the main event. This is the Michael Johnson show. The real main event. My this, dog, I've been saying it for the longest. This is the people's main event. The, the menace. The menace. Now, now you're, everything is uh, on Instagram. You're menace 155. On Twitter, you're menace 155. Do you have to change that now? Uh, yeah, I might change it. Put a little slash 145 there. Uh, you know, I'm uh, I'm not completely vacating lightweight. Okay. You know, I want people to get this straight. You know, um, 
I still got some unfinished business up there. And if a big fight presents itself at 55, then I'm there. Right. But, you know, Instagram won't let me change my name because I, I got uh, that little blue cool check mark. Right, right. Now, are you going to pace yourself in this fight? Because I feel like Elkins is really hard to get rid of, and I don't want to see you getting tired going into the third round. You hit the nail on the head, man. Uh, that, that's what I've been working on this whole camp is really pacing myself, knowing when to attack, realizing when to, you know, step off to the side. Uh, I, some of my fights, if you watch, you know, I rush myself and then I make stupid mistakes or I gas myself out and, uh, and then I just lose a fight that I'm not supposed to lose. Yeah, well, you're, you're not, not losing this one. My last fight. You're not, you're not losing so this he's one. He's going to get picked apart and uh, whenever he goes out, he's going to go out. Right, right. Cool. All right, listen, I can't wait for this fight. I like Elkins, okay, but I, I, I'm not, I've known you longer, and uh, you're my friend. So uh, I got a root for you in this one. Um, uh, good luck, brother. Thanks for being on the podcast. Uh, oh, by the way, what do you walk around at? What's your walking around weight? Uh, for this camp or <laughs> in, ge- in general? Oh, in general, my walk around weight's about like a buck seventy. All right, so this is only uh, it's only twenty five pound cut. It's not not crazy. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not it's not too bad. And like I said, man, I feel incredible. Like this is the strongest I've felt in a while, and I'm lower in weight. No, no shrinkage in like the genital areas or anything, because I know like you're losing all that weight. To like does the does the girlfriend get mad and be like, what happened to your huge shaft? You know, like, he actually looks a little bigger because I don't have a stomach down there anymore. You know, I'm a little slim. So, so, so he, so, I mean, he's cocked a little to the left, but he, he's sitting pretty slow. <laughs> Good. All right. There you go. Listen, the fans out there, Michael Johnson's penis is just as big as it was before. I know everyone was very, uh, <laughs> everyone was very curious about it. But uh, thank you so much, man. Good luck on Sunday. All right. Perfect. Thanks, Adam, man. Take, Thanks for hearing from you. Take care. All right. That was Michael Johnson. Dude, this card is stacked, dude. I'm just looking at it right now. We have, dude, we have, um, Vitor Belfort versus Raya Hall. Oh, okay, okay. So let's. It's freaking let's, crazy okay, card. You're going a little. You're going a little quick there, Joe. I just All noticed right. that. Sounds right like your sex. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at you, fucking uh, horse belt CB uh, coming in. Horse uh, belt CB. <laughs> you, you don't even know. That's the thing, man. These fucking young kids they don't even know about the horse belt circuit. What the hell, CD? You know the horse belt circuit? CD. Is? No, I, no, I don't. No, okay. we've only known each other for fucking <laughs> two. Right, so which, by the way, CD. by the way, I do want to say no. that today is January 9th. Yes. Three days from now is my. Two year anniversary with MMA Rose. There you go. Nice. nice. You, all right. All right. That's two years too long. I, right. I, so, about, yeah. So, anyway, the Boris Belt, back in the day, comedians didn't have, there was no Instagram or Netflix or whatever. And really, the live show was the live show. And the Boris Belt circuit was like the Catskill circuit. And so, all these great comedians would go upstate New York. And work this circuit, uh, and you see Jackie Mason and Dangerfield and all these legendary comics, and it was a lot of like the comedy that I like, which is punchline comedy, comedy comics that actually there's joke telling, mm-hmm. and that's what I mean by Boris Belt. Like oh, the Boris Belt. So anytime you hear a rim John, boom, boom, shh. But people, that, that's like an insult now. You go, but on bum, shh. Not a fucking what? A joke is an insult. Yeah, you don't really do it for like a bad joke. You but know. It, a, to me, a joke is a joke. Yeah. And. And for every nine, for every ten jokes you write, maybe two or three are going to be good, mm-hmm. which means seven are going to be bad. But it's the effort that counts, people. It's the effort. It's it's the you trying. Okay. So fuck it. I like CB's Boris Belt jokes, Boris Belt Comedy Hour, or just. But that's what everyone wants to. But now with this alternative comedy emergence that happened, it's all about storytelling and and wordplay and like funny th- th- throwbacks of like, let me do a reference from an 80s show and then this and that and then awkward pauses and bombing is the new killing. And it just becomes this whole thing, which I think in some ways, I wouldn't say ruined comedy, but definitely uh, got people going, I don't get this shit anymore. And it's a lot of it is just lazy writing. Mm-hmm. It's just like joke, t- joke telling is a lot of it's in the editing and people don't want to edit because editing takes patience and takes time and it takes effort. People it's like, oh, I'll just, I'll just tell a story. I have fuck Dane Cook can do it. And this one, and a lot, Dane Cook is a brilliant storyteller. I know people go, Dane Cook, Dane Cook. Look, Dane Cook in his prime was on, on when I first came to LA, 12 years ago at, at this comedy club that they used to have, forgot the name of it. Uh, oh, fuck it. 
It was a comedy club. But Jay Davis is going to kill me, by the way. It was Jay, Jay Davis and Ahmed Ahmed ran this comedy club on Sunset. And it was, and Dane Cook was a murderer. And it was the hottest chicks from Orange County would come every Tuesday night to see uh, D. Uh, they would come watch Dane Cook for an hour, a different half hour almost every week, destroy. And, uh, you know. Look, that's you know a lot of times uh, what he's doing now may not be doing what he's doing then, but got to give Dan Cook props for doing what he did. Is anyway. he even doing comedy anymore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he still and he still does well. It's just a matter. I haven't of, heard his name in years. He set the while. bar so high from where he was, and it, you know you get to a certain point in comedy if you're not a movie star, you you, you can't get you can't get higher. Like when Dice sold out Madison Square Garden, it, it just you know. Uh, you, it just couldn't, uh, you can't go any higher from that, plus all the backlash. Anyway, so let's talk about the fights this week. And I still can't believe I can't remember this fucking name of this cl club that I performed at on Sunset. Now, it, then it was something else, then it was something, uh, Dublin's, Dublin's was the name of the place. Anyway, Danielle Taylor, I hate the way she fights, but she's effective. I, uh, she, beat, <laughs> she beat Jessica Penne. Um, she wins fights that I, I thought that she really lost. Uh, she's so fighting. USADA. What? <laughs> So did you, Sada. Well, Jessica. Jessica, yeah, but she tested positive for some weird thing, too, that like I don't think was a steroid or, or what it was. It was something bizarre. I, I, I texted Penne. She's skinnier and, than the microphone. What steroid is she really going to be on? I don't know. She's, I like Jessica Penne. We used to go so on, do I. We, went, we went on a couple dates. They, they didn't go very well. All right, so she's fighting J.J. Aldridge. Uh, tell me who wins this fight, CB. Uh, I want to go with JJ. I like her more, but Danielle Taylor just somehow she ekes out the points and gets those split decisions. She's like the Benson Henderson of the females. No, because Ben Henderson has some wars. This chick. No, is not but I'm talking about in terms of like squeaking by with the decisions that a lot of people will argue about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every one of her fights, I'm like, but then, but, but, but I, I like her though. She, I, but she Danielle Taylor, with I, Alan and I did, yeah, I was gonna say, I think she switched cam. She's with Sakes and Muay Thai now with Alan. Yeah, and doing things a little bit differently. And JJ. She's kind of fell flat since leaving Invicta and being on Tough and whatnot. So I, I'd venture to say that Danielle Taylor probably. All right. Uh, Kwang Ho Kong is fighting Guido Ganete. I, this is when I wish Greg Wilson was on the show. King Ho Kong. Uh, his, name is, his nickname is Mr. Perfect. I don't know who the fuck these people are. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Talita Bernardo has taken Irene Aldana. Irene's the one who fought uh, Leslie, right? Leslie beat her. Yeah. And then... Uh, now, if I'm not mistaken, he ran a knocked out Jessamine Duke. Yeah, and yeah, and, but she lost to Felice Herrig, and she lost to uh, Leslie. Leslie. I don't know Talita Bernardo, uh, but I'm gonna go with uh, I don't care. Aldana All needs right. a, Aldana <laughs> needs a big showing. She needs a big showing. She was her and Alexa Grasso were the two like really really highly touted Mexican girls coming out of Invicta into the UFC. People were waiting years for it, and then kind of fell flat. Yeah. So she needs a big performance. A girl without a Wikipedia page will kind of tell you something. So, yeah, probably I, I don't have a Wikipedia page because I, I did it myself. And then everyone said I was lying. I, I'm like, no, here's the, here's the IMDb. Here's the video. And some 12-year-old kid from Canada is like, no, 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 no proof. And kept taking my fucking page down. I'm like, you mother, and then I'm, it's like three in the morning, I'm doing a comedy show in like Arkansas, I'm depressed enough, and now everything I've accomplished is being either taken down by, by some committee of, of 12 year olds in Canada. <laughs> anyway. They got nothing uh, else to do up there. Yeah, pretty much. Jessica I is taking on Kalinda Faria. I hope I win. She needs a win. Come on. It's her flyweight debut. She doesn't have to cut... Uh, I liked her. As much. I hung and out with her. She's a cool chick. She is. Kalin Jafaria fought at 216. Who'd she fight? She fought, um, I think her name is Maria Batello Romero or something like Who that. Who won? Not her. Okay. So I think Jessica I at 125, I think this is her time to shine and come back Jessica out. Jessica is a cool, she'd be a cool girlfriend. She's really cool. But she is a little moody. Uh, based on her Facebook page, she's uh, she kind of a moody chick. Kind of, she's definitely uh, a high maintenance girl, a high maintenance like like she's from one of the funniest things ever. She's Cleveland. The first time she came on this podcast, I was like, "Oh, say, so are, are you single?" And she's like, hundred percent. Ain't nobody from Cleveland say that they're gonna say that like they hit this." I'm like, "Oh, see so you horny?" And she's like, "I don't think she heard that, but she said hundred percent." So then I put like on my thing, Jessica I is 100% horny and single. And it got like a billion hits. And next thing I know, she walks in the gym. It said everyone was staring at her. <laughs> Did but, she take you on like a duck tour in Cleveland or something? We some went shit on like a boat. That? We went on a boat 
uh, we were, she's like, hey, tomorrow I want to go on the boat in Cleveland around. So I'm like, all right, like the dirtiest water of all time. <laughs> but we go there, and then we're like, it's me, her, and her friend. And I, I don't even want to take off my shirt at the time because I figure she's around like all athletes, and I have like a belly. Mm-hmm. I actually was like making excuses, like, oh, I, I haven't worked out in a couple years. And, and then so then we're throwing a football. She's throwing a perfect spiral. My, I, I throw, I'm throwing like a, like a chick. I, I was, it was definitely the worst. Date I've ever I don't know if it was really a date. It I was, was like, gonna say, does she? No, it wasn't a date. In her in her head, it wasn't a date. It was just her showing me Cleveland. I, it was actually a lot of fun. I had I had a really good time, and she's super cool. Uh, I, I I think that, you know, she's one of these girls that you know she loses a couple fights or even guys, and they think that they let you down. They think that they aren't good or you know the thing they put so much pressure on themselves so they don't want to return my text or when I say hey you know keep your head up or whatever and I, I, I get that but if you're listening Jessica I, I'm a fan and friend and you don't have to worry uh, it, it's not that life is bigger than all this shit but I was like that when I wrestled in high school if I lost a match I wouldn't leave my room in boarding school for like a week or two until I won then I lost three in a row one year. I, I didn't leave for like a month. I was so ashamed of like letting everyone down because of all the expectations that I put. And it was all, I didn't have to do that. But in my head, I, this is who I was. And every, you know, every time someone sees Jessica, like, I, they're like, oh, you're a fighter? When's your next fight? When's your next fight? Or, oh, you know, keep your head up. Or I love watching you fight. And that's what people associate themselves with, which is why so many fighters can't quit. Because they have nothing else, or they think they have nothing else. They probably do have something. They have, they have a lot else. But in their head, they're a fighter. Mm-hmm. And she I, I get it. She needs to win. She oh, and four win. in her last four. She needs to win. Zach Cummings, Tiago Alves. Uh, fuck. Fuck. Fuck for who? I, it's just, it's a weird matchup, but it's intriguing. And it's the stylistic grappler versus striker matchup. I got Zach. I, I think yep. so. I think Tiago's on the way down, but you never know with him. He sometimes shows up when people are not expecting him. Yeah, he had one fight last year, though. Only one. He, he, got, he, got, he got the win, but he only had one fight. Zach Cummings is a very active fighter. That camp, that Missouri camp, it's in St. Louis, which could Glory be good MMA or bad. Yeah, that's in, that's in St. Louis. That could be good or bad. Um, Matt Frivola, the steamroller. Uh, he's in black and white on this. It looks like a mugshot, dude. Yeah. He's fighting Marco Polo Reyes. This is not a game. Um, so, uh, who are these people, CB? Tell them. Talk to me. What? Sorry. Who, who the, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> My mom's texting me. Oh God! What? 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 The dogs need to eat. All right, come on. What? Is, <laughs> CB, how's your weekend look? Oh, I gotta walk with dogs. I'm like, do you have anything to promote? Uh, yeah, the new dog food that my that cuddle, that Whiskers likes. Anyway, so Matt Frivola. Whiskers. <laughs> Why would Whiskers be a dog's name? <laughs> Why would you get a fucking cyborg tattoo? All right. That's, I have a better answer for that than Whiskers. Uh, mm. Not really. Are you asking me about Marco Polo Reyes? Yes. He was at 199, got in the fight of the night with Dong Young Kim, the lightweight. You were yeah. there. You saw it. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know who Matt Frivola is, but Marco Polo Reyes, tough, gritty, just downright crazy dude. Never count him out of a fight. But the guy's name is the Steamroller. That's, that's a good nickname. The Steamroller... If you, you don't this think, rhyming shit for nicknames is just Matt Frivola. The, it'd be the great. steam roller. It should be the, the uh, yeah because he's gonna get steam rolled. It should be the the, the uh, fruit roll up. That would be cool. <laughs> the fruit roll frivola. That's actually better. I the actually fru- like that. Fruit better. roll up. The fruit roll. Except everybody's gonna think he's gay. And who cares? Let them think that. Whatever they want. Nothing wrong with being gay anymore. Uh, I'm not or, saying or, that. Or <laughs> All right. So Alex White. He's the guy that beat our, our our boy. Right. He beat the last fight. He beat um my boy from Canada, Mitch Clark. He's fighting James oh, yeah. James Kraus. White looked great in that fight, but Kraus is too good, too strong, too tough. Nice guy, good husband. I gotta go with James Kraus in this fight. Come on, Kraus. Although White seems like I heard, I heard he's got a really good story. El- Elkins Johnson. We had Johnson on. Uh, I got Johnson because he's he's uh, he was on the podcast, and I like him. Uh, Kamaru Usman, Emil Meek. Took this fight. Talk to me about this fight. Isn't this guy a Viking? I, yeah, he's he's the one that got his UFC contract by knocking out Paul Horace in like Russia or in that weird ACB. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he was the one that also had to shave his beard randomly right before the fight. This was supposed to be at 219, then it was supposedly at 220, the visa issues. But Usman, 
he's just on the rise. He's great everywhere. He's tough. And he's, unlimited potential. Exactly. N- nice guy too. Exactly. A real nice guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. These, these, these Nigerians uh, are, are great people. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the fighters from Nigeria. Um, like, uh, Is it Francis from Nigeria? I think he's from Cameroon. But, I, I, but we had the uh, Anthony and Jekawani is from oh, Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, Kamaru Usman's from Nigeria. My friend Godfrey's from Nigeria. Samuel Peter. I didn't, I didn't met him, but he was a good boxer from Nigeria. I've not met a Nigerian person that I have not liked or, or rooted for. Right. I can't say that about people from like uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Or, uh, <laughs> so, uh, Paige Van Zant versus Jesse Jess. This should be a good fight. Uh, Jesse Jess is my girl. She came. She, she was my cat sitter. She's unlimited potential. I like her coach, Paige Van Zant. It's not her that I don't like because she seems like a perfectly nice, sweet person. It's the system. It's the fact that, like, they just keep, oh, here's a pretty girl. They keep pushing you on. Pushing her. Yeah. She has a book deal. A fucking book deal. She's 21. Is it a coloring book? I, that would be a great book. I mean, I mean <laughs> or Playboy. But, but, but a book deal. Playboy doesn't show nudes no more. Dancing with the stars. Look, I can't hate her for her success and, and for taking advantage of the opportunity. She left Team Alpha Male. I'm just not a fan of her little promise a few years ago, and then she reneged on it. That kind of lost All my about respect shaving for her. her head? When she got to the UFC, I'll shave my head, and now she's just giving a monetary donation to those people. And I think that's kind of fucked up. Yeah, and then somebody else Facebooked her. And asked her for something, and then her mom got back to that person. Hey, this is her mom, and I run her Facebook account. And I'm like, you know what? I don't like that. That's not cool. It sounds like that bullying thing a couple months ago where the mom was just like, yeah, we need money. We don't need support. You're like, what That's the not fuck? a little different than that situation. I actually, it's nothing like that. It's not even in the same fucking vein as it's that. It's catfishing. The only thing that it has is they both have parents. That's the only thing that they have in common. That, But it's, not, it's just uh, like you're a 20-something-year-old woman and it's, people think they're Facebooking you. Either don't have a, an account or answer it yourself. Uh, I don't know or filter it whatever I don't know Jesse Jess I like I like her I like her story she's every time I met her she's super cool funny chick hope she wins I think she should win I mean Van Zandt's coming up Jessica's coming down she fought at 35 before uh, she's fought better she's fought better people I think well no let's go fuck the karate hottie and she fought uh, Rose right didn't Van Zandt lose to Rose yeah yeah she had destroyed yeah I mean, she looked good against Felice Her Herrig. Her face was fucked. She looked good against Rose. Herrig, and she looked good against uh, Roddy, Berg. Roddy Beck. But she didn't look that good against Roddy Beck. She just landed that one she kick. She landed that one kick. Uh, uh, I think Jesse, I think Jesse, Jesse is, the, is the favorite here. Uh, and then we have Uriah Hall versus Belfort. I hope Uriah Hall wins. The only thing that scares me here is he's a slow starter sometimes. And will he let Belfort get into that fight? Vitor's last... been slow since TRT got pulled. Very good point. This is not the same Vitor Belfort that once was. Uriah could knock him out, should knock him out. Uriah Hall just is, you don't ever know what Uriah Hall is going to show up. Uh, His last fight was amazing. I almost cried watching that fight. Yeah, but cause... that fight was, uh, he took so many unnecessary punishment in that yeah. fight. And he was getting killed. They almost uh-huh. stopped it. Oh, the Jutko, Gustav Jutko yeah. fight. He's been talking about that a lot recently in, in interviews that he was just getting murdered. One thing clicked and it was like, all right, I got to go out there and win this fight. Otherwise, this could be my ass on the Yeah, but what if they would have stopped that fight earlier? They didn't. I know they didn't. <laughs> I mean. And then Jeremy Stevens versus Duho Choi. I got Stevens in this fight. Uh, Duho Choi looked great against guys, but he wasn't fighting the best guys. Cub Swanson, I think, I wouldn't say exposed him, but shows that he's beatable. I got a little heathen. You guys? I love Jeremy Stevens. I really love Jeremy Stevens, and I was thinking about this this morning. Cubs beat both of them. Um, but, like, you know, with Cub, he was winging combos, and he did rock Duho Choi. But Stevens is more of like a power puncher, one shot, knock you out type guy. He's got to land on Duho Choi. I'm thinking it goes five rounds. Choi could get a point decision, but I, I can never bet against Jeremy Stevens. I mean, I'm the one that picked Jeremy Stevens against Frankie Edgar a while back. So. He almost won that fight. I mean, he hurt Edgar. Edgar was smart in that fight, but he was hurt. That, that was a good pick, actually. Um, so That's a fight that makes me nervous, by the way, is Edgar and Holloway, man, announced yesterday. It's, that's a great fight. It's, I think it's the best fight in the featherweight division at this of point. Of course, it's number the one title. and two. No, I mean, like, in terms of, like, enjoying it as a fan and, like, what it brings to the table. 
The night before, by the way, that fight, I will be at the Dirty at 30. Uh, at, at South Point. At the South, South Point, Point Casino. Yeah. And then I'm going to go take us to that fight. I can't wait for that fight. That's, That's going to awesome. be a good card. I may be in Vegas for that fight Friday and Saturday. I haven't decided yet. It depends on the dogs? No, it depends on if UFC security kicks me out of the hotel for the third time straight. <laughs> really? Yeah. What happened? They don't like graphers anymore. There's a new security guard that works for the UFC. I had a room at the Signature, paid for everything, and I got booted and had to come home a night early. Well, were you standing outside people's rooms? No, not at all. I was, standing, I was sitting in the, in the hallways down next to the lobby, and I had a room and everything. They're just, there's one dude that just is not cool with it anymore. He thinks everybody's a seller, and... You know, so people are getting thrown out and whatnot. And is there more to this story? No, there really isn't. Legitimately, there isn't. He like, did the like, same thing to me at two fourteen in L.A. He did the same thing to me at two sixteen. Like in you were Vegas. popping up in like the pool. No, or, like people were like in the. I hot got a one spot and I sit there and that was it. <laughs> That's bullshit. It's you know what it is what it is. Huh. You know, it's you an weren't like in the urinal next to the fighter. No, like, it's, like, an unfor- it's an unfortunate. It's an unfortunate. And I paid over. I paid three hundred bucks to get the fucking room too. And like, what it's hotel just, is this? It was at the Signature, which is inside of MGM. But it's an unfortunate circumstance. Bellator doesn't care about graphers, which I love. So that'll be the next few weeks of my life will be in Bellator. But uh, Now, I had heard that someone said on the underground, it was true, that Bellator was changing their name to Utmost Fighting Championship. I didn't hear anything about that, uh, but I, I, I fucking a, pray to God they're not. Because then it's like UFC versus UTFC. Like, I, I think is this Tyron's opening joke tonight? I think it's a, jo- <laughs> I think it's a, I think it's a joke. So, but, all right, uh, some news. Big John joins Bellator as a commentator. Uh, he's no longer refing. Do we know anything more about why Jimmy Smith was let go? Because all I see is like, it was mutual. Let's talk about what I just said before you just go into your well, own fucking news Big story. Big John is taking over for Jimmy Smith. All right, all right, fine. But let's talk. Well, I didn't know that. Let me maybe lead with that. <laughs> and, and then I go, that way you're just fucking throwing out another news story. Well, I just say that my story. All right. It's the same news story. All right. Now that I know We're that. We're working together. You, We're partners here. Really? It doesn't seem like we're working together. It seems like you're just topping my fucking story with your story. Who cares? All right. So Big John McCarthy. Uh, uh, I think is going to be a great commentator. That guy knows more about fighting than anybody. In fact, you look at like the early UFCs, like the, like UFC six or four, or, like one. The dude was there. He he's done more fights than anybody, and he's so smart. And he has a school, and he trains, mm-hmm. and and good for him. That guy, he could do anything. Uh, unfortunately, he's one of the best reps. Do you think you're going to miss him from the UFC events? Like not seeing there any UFCs anymore? I'm going to miss him as a ref because he was one of the best refs. Almost never was there a problem. Mm-hmm. And you can't say that against even, you know, Mazagati, Kim Winslow, who's gone, thank God. But even, uh, what's his name? Yamasaki. Yamasaki. Herb Dean Herb, sometimes. Even Herb Dean sometimes. The other people you can't say that about. Mm-hmm. But this dude, Big John McCarthy, is almost perfect mm-hmm. in a really hard job. That's probably the hardest job there is, is being a referee. Mm-hmm. Because he said he's not 100% giving up the ref position. Just for now, he's calling it off. He should do both at the same time. <laughs> he probably fucking could. Just put a headset <laughs> yeah. mic on him like they awesome, hadn't pried yeah. with the camera. Yeah. And just have him fucking commentate from straight up. That'd be amazing. Yeah, that would be. But then he give, like, it, give it like two to three years. This will happen inside. You heard it here first, people. Yeah. By the way, who called Misha Tate's pregnancy on the podcast? Me, all right? I, I didn't say pregnancy, but I, I called that there was something going on between, on The Ultimate Fighter, I said, she was, I don't know, with this Nunez guy lost, and he went to her, and she gave him the fuck me eyes, mm-hmm. and everyone looked at me like, Adam doesn't know what he's talking about, he's just a horny guy, yeah. and then, bam, Tate is pregnant with Johnny Nunez, <clears throat> so, uh, and good for her. Congratulations. Good for her, she's done fighting. I heard it's a girl. Really? Yeah. From who? <laughs> But did you graft the kid already? <laughs> no. You didn't sign like a, have like a thing up her vagina? And no, it, and, and Pena's giving birth in like three days. How do you know it's a girl? How do I know it's a Because that's what I heard from a report from Misha. Report from Misha? From Misha, yeah. When did she say it was a girl? She, 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 I, heard it on, I read it on Twitter like a couple days ago. I could be wrong, say, but I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's what I thought it was saying. It's Something about hurting. her baby girl is oh. coming. No. Oh. All right. Good, good for her. <laughs> Why do you look at me like two years later, like I don't fucking read everything that pops up on Twitter? That's good. All right. I didn't know that you heard it was a girl. I have nothing better to do while sitting in a shop all day that I can't tattoo. Oh. Uh, hmm. All right. All right. So it makes you take, anyway, good for her. I mean, she's going to be a good mom. Uh, people were saying Caraway was on Suicide Watch. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. Uh, you know, Misha Tate does... She does seem a little high maintenance, and uh, not that she doesn't deserve to be high maintenance, but you know, uh, a girl like that, I, I don't know. I don't know. 
What are you gonna do? Did you see uh, that meme where it was like it was a picture of Brian Caraway and then a picture of Misha Tate's like new boyfriend? And it's like it said you versus the yeah. guy she tells you not to yeah, worry about. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know what? Caraway is a good dude, and yeah. uh, I'm sure he'll be fine. And, I, and I'm sure he gets chicks out of his league, and I'm sure he'll be fine. I'm sure he'll be fine. <laughs> if it happened once, it'll happen again. Yeah, it's like Chris Rock had a joke about like no matter how hot the girl is, there's some guy tired of fucking her. Like some guy's like, man, I gotta go home and fuck Tyra Banks tonight. <laughs> <laughs> like, mm-hmm. but you know, Misha Tate. But he did. He did say that no matter what, he, that she was wild in bed, and she probably is. Oh, he said that. Yeah, on the a podcast, he said that everything that you could imagine him doing to Misha Tate, he did. Or uh, her to him. Or her. To, yeah, or her to him. <laughs> yeah, right. Or Nunez to both of them. Okay, so uh, I'm kidding. No, I'm happy. I, I happen to know Nunez. He's a cool guy. And oh, I thought you meant Amanda Nunes. I'm like, wait, what? No, Johnny Nunes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she's, me and Misha are cool. She came to my show, and, uh, and me and Caraway are cool. So, anyway, Tanya Evans out of her fight. She is? Yes. I don't know. I guess she had a, a fisting incident. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, she's, she's out. I just look at it. So, Marion Renault needs a new opponent. Oh, the, the hot school teacher. I, I like Marion Renault. She's the yeah, one, uh, the Belizean a, bruiser. Yeah, that was a great fight. That was a good fight. That was a really good fight. I was excited fight. for that fight, actually. Yeah, so now Marion needs a new opponent. And Marion, look, when she gets done up, damn. Yeah, she's, she's cute. Underrated. Under- very underrated. Un- very underrated ground game. No, I, meant, I meant, like, how hot she is. Oh, well, yeah, yeah that yeah, too. Yeah, 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 people don't Agreed. actually. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Barrow is fighting Kelleher. I like Kelleher. Uh, you know Kelleher he's yeah, a guy yeah he barely escaped Brazil oh yeah cause he what did he do he, he beat Yuri Alcantara like he just demolished him and then they were like yeah we made sure that Brian got out okay and then, didn't he call out everybody Dana give me my fucking bonus or something or? some shit like that him and Barrow yeah what what card uh, UFC on Fox 28 oh the, is that the Orlando card I think it is the Orlando card. Look, wow. you, you really do have no, you have no life. Uh, so yes, so yes, the Barrow versus Kelleher. Sam Alvey is taking on Marcin Pracino, and uh, on the Orlando card as well as uh, Kelleher. Kelleher lost. He's, he's, oh, no, he's, he's on an eight and one run. Uh, he yeah he he lost to Marilyn Vera recently. Oh, Chido Vera. Yeah yeah yeah. Um, but and then he rebounded it with a TKO victory over Damian Stasiak. Uh, and Alvi is fighting. Uh, he's replaced Jake Collier. So that that card is um, Alvi him uh, O A M versus Gilbert Burns. Olivier Aubon Mercier. That should be a good fight. That's a really good fight. Grapplers match up right there. Uh, Jessica Andrade, Tisha Torres. Ooh, Fuck, damn, dude. Boy. That, that the winner of that event. one is getting a title shot, I think. That could have been main event, dude. Yeah. That's well, a good fight. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, that's a good fight. Um, I think that uh, Tisha can win this fight, but she has to do the exact same thing that Joanna did. She has to point fight and stay away from Andrade. Yes, yeah, so which the fans are going to be pissed about that, but that's the only way to do it because this girl is like a. a She's Vanderlei. unfortunately taken on like the moniker of being kind of a boring point fighter, Tisha. I mean, she's had some nice performances, but yeah, Andrade, she's going to have to stick and move and avoid. Like, and then uh, Alan Juban versus Ben Saunders on that card. Oh, damn. 10th Planet represent. Yeah, I know. I, I said, uh, what's the name? Uh, the Eddie Bravo says this is a conspiracy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I saw that. That was funny. <laughs> Max Griffin versus Mike Perry. That should be a good fight. Max Griffin's tough. Max Payne? Yeah, Max Payne's tough. Um, That's a good rebound fight from Mike Perry, but we've seen Griffin hurt. Yeah, who hurt him? Somebody beat Fuck. him, right? Somebody hurt. I think somebody hurt him, and then he came back and beat him. But didn't, didn't Eric Anders knock him out? Uh, I thought what? Anders was a uh, uh, no. 185-er, or did he move up again? Somebody, Perry's somebody, a 170. Somebody knocked him out. Uh, and then um, uh, Sarah McMahon is fighting Yana Kunitskaya. From Bella to from Invicta. Yeah, you remember her, right? Yeah, the Invicta champion. The one that Tanya... The, she stepped on Tanya's face. Yeah, yeah. I think or Sarah, Tanya stepped on her face. Sarah could win this fight. I, Sarah could win this fight. Yana is the current champion because she beat Raquel Paul Louis for the, for the vacant title. It's a good matchup. Kunitsky is good off her back, as we've seen. So McMahon's going to probably have to keep this on the feed. So ATT head coach says Nunez versus Cyborg 1,000% will happen. Um, it's it, there's too much fluctuation in this announcement. 
It's like they Cyborg says yes, Nunes says no, Nunes says yes, Cyborg says no, Dana says yes, neither of them say no, and then it's going to coaches and and like they're asking Misha Tate what she thinks of the of the fight, and it's just like it, there's too much back and forth. We need well, nothing's ever final, but we need information. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no other fight at 45 though. Megan Anderson, I don't know. Supposedly Cyborg accepted, then Megan didn't, and. The 45 division, like you said in the beginning, it this is turning ridiculous. And I love Cyborg, but this is just... The thing about Megan Anderson, I like Megan Anderson, but it's it's getting a little... It is getting a little bit like, okay, when are we going to see you fight again? Because yeah. it does seem like it's been a long time. She was on a hot streak. She got a great right hand. People like her. She's marketable. She's nice. Cool chick, but what is going on? It seems like now it's a. What are we doing here? And it's not like she's injured. I see her on Instagram every day but training with crowds. Is it some kind of mental problem or something, or anxiety, or what is? I I don't know what is going on. I don't know. Kraus said. Re, I think it was either Kraus because he's the manager as well as the the head coach of Glory MMA. And he said, you know, she'll knock out Cyborg within two. Yeah, that's great. But what? And, why? But she just she won't sign a fight like That's she's the Invicta Ch- no 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 but she she herself she's the 145 Invicta champ she needs to come over to the UFC I think in terms of the UFC 145ers she could be one of the best but there's just something going on behind the scenes that nobody wants to admit or talk about that she's just not signing to fight and I like I said I watch her she looks ready but what what's the hold up so uh, it's time to debut um, okay, so Vince Pichel just showed up. I'm going to come get him. So stop. All right. <laughs> All right, so Vince Pichel just showed up uh, an hour and 15 minutes late. I told him, I go, you're the latest guest I ever had. He goes, I like to make an entrance. And he goes, do I get a belt? I'm, I'm like, <laughs> He's the new interim champion. <laughs> this is the new interim latest champion. You actually beat all the uh, Bubba Jenkins, who's, who's black. So, <laughs> which is, uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. Oh, my God. Uh, so anyway, um, so you got a fight coming up. Yes. Talk to me. I'm going to murder this guy. So bad. Joaquim Silva. He's an undefeated guy. Oh, I see places where it says he's 10-0, and then I see he's 10-1. He's a pretty well-rounded guy. Um, I just don't feel like he's going to... See, look, right here it says he's 10-1. But okay. I have no idea. Like, I don't, I, oh, I don't have no idea. I have no doubt whatsoever that he's going to be totally outmatched by me. And Okay, so where is this fight? Here. Uh, it's here. It's going to be in North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina, January 27th at... The, I think it's the Bank of America Arena, but they call it they call it something else. I think it's called like the Spectrum or something too. I don't, I don't really know honestly. I've never been out there. So wh- how did this come place? Like, why did you say, how did you find out about it? Why did you say yes? Talk to me. Well, I was I've been trying to get a fight since my last one. Since uh, since that last fight in June in New Zealand, I've been trying to get another fight, and I was like ready to fight like two weeks later after that one. So I'm trying to get a fight. I'm telling my manager, hit up Sean. He said I'm Sean. Nothing. I actually did have a guy that. I uh, was going to fight December 15th in Canada, but he ended up being a welterweight, so that got scratched. Um, And then so I've just been kind of like hanging back, like waiting, you know what I mean? And nothing was happening, so I was like, fuck it, I went back to work, I've been working, kept egging my manager, like, give me a fight, give me a fight. Uh, Got me a fight, he's like, Joaquin Silva, Um, he's undefeated, whatever, yada, yada, look him up. I said, I don't care, give me the fight. Okay, so I'm looking at this so guy right now. He has uh, he's ten and zero. He's got five knockouts, three submissions, two decisions. He beat Reza Madadi by split decision. I, I don't know how he won that fight, honestly. Uh, uh, Reza's is the guy who got accused of taking purses, stealing purses, went to jail. What? Uh, Serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a purse snatcher. Yeah, the Swedish dude. Yeah, the Swedish. Yeah, he's, he's a Swedish wrestler, isn't he? He looks like every bad guy in every uh, James Bond movie. <laughs> he I totally mean, does. He just looks like he looks like Gargamel, but he's, he's ripped he's got, guy. He's got that blockhead. <laughs> so have you now? Have you have you watched that fight? Yeah, I have, and that's why I said I don't know how he won that fight. Um, I mean, it was a pretty close fight, but I feel like uh, Rez kind of inched it away from him, but the judges gave it to him. And I mean, not so really surprised. You can't really trust those bastards either. Then, you, then, it, then it says uh, he beat Andrew Holbrook, knocked him out in 34 seconds. So this guy's probably got decent power. Yeah. I feel like he does have some decent power in his hands, um, but I don't think his little T-Rex arms are going to be long enough to even get to me, <laughs> honestly. Right. Okay. And then he, uh, he beat Nazaro Malaraji. He lost to Glacio no Franca, but no then clue. I guess that was overturned. 
because it says 10 and 0, but it has him losing there. Oh, maybe that's the one that he lost. Well, I, I found he's, he's 10 and 1. The UFC uh, app says he's 10 and 1, but I see he's 10 and 0 everywhere, so. I mean, I honestly don't even give a shit about his record. And then he beat Eric Carlos Silva. Is that the same? Is that, no, that's, that's, not, that's a different one. That was on the, the that was on the show actually. I think that was. Oh, so this guy's from the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, he was on the Ultimate Fighter Brazil. Um, I think the fourth one. I'm not sure. So are we working yes. on a lot of submission defense was, for this fight? Um, yeah, I'm always working my submission defense. Uh, I'm always working my striking. I don't ever like like if I'm fighting a guy, I don't ever just work on one particular thing. I work on everything. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to like. I'm not trying to. Honestly, train for like I am training for this guy, but I'm not training totally for this guy. You know what I mean? I'm training myself to get better in every aspect. So, like the the way I see it is, I, I don't really see him wanting to even go to the ground with me. He he looks like more of a striker. He likes to strike, but who knows? He might try to take me down. But if he is, I'm not really worried. Um, I'm a I'm a pretty dangerous guy on the ground too. A lot of people don't even know that because my fights don't really go that long. But you know, it, it is what it is. And as far but, as uh, weight goes, like because I I was like you walk around at like two fifty. Um, <laughs> just between my legs uh perfect so, <laughs> so this fight's at 55 what do you weigh right now uh right now i'm 168 oh so you're 13 pounds over yeah and that's two weeks two three weeks out yeah i'm, that's re great. I'm ready i'm having an easy weight cut right now are you want to eat a certain diet or are you yeah i'm actually on a pretty strict diet and uh that's kind of a funny story because i got i actually got blocked by someone on facebook today because i was someone was asking about diet stuff and i was like giving her some advice and this this person was kind of bullshitting my friend so i was like Oh, no, like, you know what I mean? I wasn't saying this person was wrong, but I was like, there's, you know, variables, whatever. And this person got so mad because I kept, like, poking at him, and they just eventually blocked me. <laughs> so what's this new diet? What's the diet? What's, what do you, what's, what's the secret? Tell us. Talk to us. Honestly, everyone's different, but my diet is, like, a, it's a pretty low-carb, high-protein diet, like most diets. Um, when I get closer, I, I honestly have to cut a lot of my carbs almost completely out besides the ones I get from uh, like fruits and vegetables, things like that. You know what I mean? Like that's where I get a lot of my carbs at the end. So I have energy to train and, and stuff like that. But uh, it's, it's, you know, just a generic chicken fish diet, you know, lots of greens. Um, I eat fruits um, every once in a while. I'll, I'll, when I get a wild hair up my ass, I'll go to Del Taco and eat some burritos or something. You know what I mean? If is I'm too wild low hair up your ass? Yeah. Is, that, is, that, is, that an, is that an expression? Is that a real expression? <laughs> I've heard it before. <laughs> Why would you have a wild hair up your ass? Sometimes they go rogue, dude. You never know. <laughs> dude, the best worst feeling in the world is when you when you bang a chick. The best worst. And feeling. like the next morning, you're in the shower and you have to get that hair out of your asshole because it just it's, it just keeps going. You know, I don't like think that. that's a chick you banged. <laughs> no. no or banged saying, you? No. I've had that happen so many times. Where all of a sudden that random hair and you're like and it just keeps going you're like what the fuck and it feels kind of cool against your asshole but at the same time it just feels oh good. yeah yeah actually I've had that I've had I've had hairs like wrapped around my dick and shit and you pull on it and it's kind of like woo <laughs> I never had them around my dick but, but yeah my asshole so uh, all right so now where are we at are we doing the same camp are we going to different camps are we going to Alliance what are my, we doing no my camp is the same uh, um I did train at Alliance, but I, I went back to my roots because after that Alliance, I, I lost that fight and kind of, I was a little out of my element. I wasn't really comfortable with, with that and I didn't want to go through that again. So I got my ass kicked that fight anyway. So uh, I'm at PG Grapplers with my, my head coach, Brian Peterson, who I've with, been with since I even started training in the first place. I'm um, still with Peter Cunningham over at Sugarfoot's down in West Hills, actually right down the street from here. And then uh, I go to Street Sports in uh, Simi Valley of the Bomb Brothers. I train with them. A lot of friends over there I train with. And I go to also to uh, Zuza and Citadong, and I train over there with a lot of really good Muay Thai guys. Wow. A lot of pro Muay Thai guys I train with. Now, are you still working, or are you off work? I was working, but I took January off, uh, and I would like, like to say thank you, Al Davis, for giving me that at Taft, because... He didn't have to give me the time off, but he did. He's a real cool guy about it. He's super cool about, is he you big, know. Fan, is he a fan of fighting? I don't know, honestly, but um, he, he understands what I do. And he, and he, you know, I explain to him, I talk to him straight, let him know, like, you know what I mean? I, I'm going to need this time off. Like, I don't want to ruin my job relationship with them because, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm always going to be working for them in the future. But, uh, you know what I mean? I just talked to him straight and he was su super cool about it. He's a super cool guy. Everyone there is super cool. So, you know, I just let him, I just let him know up front. And he was like, yeah, just let me know which one off. He's like, we'll just put you as sitting. And then when you're done fighting, you whoop this dude's ass, come back. We'll put you back to work. So I'm like, that's, sweet. That's great. Now, the last time there was a girl that you had just met off Instagram, oh, uh, yeah. who was Latin, big ass titties. Uh, <laughs> and, and you were meeting her that night. Uh, yeah. Any update on that? She flaked on me. Oh, oh yeah. Dude. Super flaky chick. Super oh, flaky. An Instagram hoe flaked on you? Wow, that's that's a shocker. <laughs> I, she actually did not flake on me one time after that, so she, she flaked on me a few times, and I was kind of getting a little turned off by it, so I kind of like was like whatever and, and stopped hitting her up. 
and letting her like basically say, okay, we can hang out or whatever. You know what I mean? And then I'm like, whatever, I'll go with the flow. So, uh, she did like hit me up. We hung out. Uh, she came, actually came to the gym, watched me train and stuff. That was our like hanging out, I guess. And then, uh, that was it. And you know, I, I don't really talk to her too much. It's kind of weird, but she's a nurse and she's like you bang super no? busy now. She's super busy and like, you know, doing her own thing and I'm doing my own thing. So I'm kind of like, I'm like, whatever, honestly, right now, I got too much of my focus on my fight and I don't really care about any, are you on, girls. any, no, now a lot of guys cut out has sex for fights. I know CB did for like at least 35 years. Like, <laughs> that was um, a hell of a fight he trained for. No. Um, <laughs> now, do you, do you cut out sex for fights? Or? No, I don't. Like if, I mean, when, when I'm in my fight camp, I'm not like actively chasing girls because I got too much of my concentration on the fight, but I'm not, you know I mean, if I'm going to get late, I'm going to get late. I'm not going to be like, oh no, like that's honestly a wives tale to me. Like where guys say, oh, you need to stock up your testosterone or whatever bullshit that yeah, was yeah. I mean, back in the day. That's like karate guys saying they have to register their hands with lethal weapons. Like your fucking hands are garbage. <laughs> I know. That's what a lot of, I was, somebody was trying to tell me, somebody was trying to tell me that like, that guys like Chuck Norris hands are, are registered. I'm like, no, it, he's not. And yeah. the guy was I'm like, dude, that's what I was in the 80s. They, they, there was a rumor yeah. spread by Joe's parents. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that never happened. That never happened. Now, 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 now Joe's Are you a been, guy, Joe? Now, Joe's been having a hard time with girls. Uh, uh, what happened was there was one girl that liked... Uh, she, she wanted a knife to her head while he, she was having sex. And then it kept getting hot. Are you he, serious? So he yeah. went out and got a, a machete. Wow. A machete. Yeah. Go like, big or go home, like I guess. A rusty, <laughs> a rusty ass a machete. Rusty. I already had the machete. It was under my bed. I okay. just pulled it out when we were making love. We're trying to that. make it less creepy. Yeah, so what's with the machete under your bed, by the way? Well, the machete is off. there for self-defense, but I didn't know this girl was a freaky <laughs> bitch. So I just pulled it out one night, held it up to her throat, and she was like, damn, that's hot. And I'm like, that's hot. You know. Oh wow! That, Wait, that, so you didn't know that she wanted it before you held it to her throat? Well, so you I just asked, did it? Oh, right. so that's something you wanted, and she was just kind of like, okay. "Oh my god, this gets worse and worse every time <laughs> yeah, we then, hear but it." Then he, but then he I was going to take a picture of you and, and kind of tell, it, say, "Hey, girls, this is the guy." But now yeah, I might I not want to. You, you might, might be on some websites before your fight. Yeah, she might be on some websites. But then he went out and bought a, 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 a shotgun, like a, like like a musket. A musket? Uh, a musket? A musket? Like a, a musket? black powder gun you got to like, pack? I bought a Remington hunting rifle. Just have a bayonet okay. on the because end the of girl, it? A girl says she wanted him to hold a gun to her head during sex. So he went well, out and bought the same girl. I said, you know, I mean, holding up a uh, machete is pretty hot. How would you feel if I held up like a real firearm to your head? And she was like, that's fucking hot. Do you ever wow. want to get laid again? <laughs> I mean, you I mean, mean that's. <laughs> I mean, I mean that can't. Oh, come on, listen, guys. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt here. That might not be too bad. She might be a little freaky, but at the same time, you might have to be careful because what is she going to do when you're so, sleeping so, or wake up with that gun to your fucking head? Every yeah. time we, every time we get more ratings, Joe's dating pool decreases more and wait, more. I don't know. Wait. So then, wait. So then, you, so then he orders a shotgun online. If anybody who's who's against gun control to just know that he like was able to get a shotgun. Better. All right. So you got a shotgun. Wait, wait, wait. Why would you say it like that? Do you have something that we don't know about? But here, why guys? should he? Be able to get a gun. He, obviously, this dude is I, lots of very unstable human beings. He walks into Target and they shut down the nerf aisle. <laughs> <laughs> so oh then, wait. God. So what happened? So then, you, did you have, have the gun during sex or no? Uh, no, because she messaged me one day and she's like, "I don't think I can hang out with you no more." <laughs> She, she said, said she had like some I don't know what hepatitis. What's that? Like some she said she had hepatitis she A got it from, or B. She she got it from the musket? No, she said she uh, had got it from a needle. Uh, oh, she was a heroin addict. Well, I don't know. Damn, is your dick that small? <laughs> she didn't, she didn't, she didn't say, Ouch. <laughs> dick with a needle. She did say if it was drugs, but she said it was like maybe from like a blood donation type of thing. Oh yeah, because people that's totally I mean you did warn her it'll be like a she, little like she gave blood or she yeah, was given blood. Yeah, a dirty needle at like a blood donation clinic, you know what I'm saying? Man, that yeah, sounds fishy. Donating, they don't do donating that. her blood to heroin needles. Yeah. <laughs> she was so, donating to a heroin addict like wait, so without then, anyone really so being then, there. So then you never got to whip, 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 whip out the gun? No, I never got the gun out during um, uh -huh. sex. So, oh, so where's the gun now? It's still in the case under my bed. Now, do your parents somehow, like, I know you live with your parents. Are they like, why, are they, why is there gun shipments? And... <laughs> no. I think they've stopped going in his room years ago. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't notice the gun in your, in your room? <laughs> no, they all know it. They're okay with it. <laughs> They're okay with it? Yeah. They didn't watch <laughs> the like news and see, like, there's a mass and shooter and be like, maybe that's, that's, that might be our kid. Like the end of the movie, <laughs> get out. <laughs> 100% though. Okay. okay, so after that, you were dating the girl from Germany. Yeah, but you have never actually met her. No. Okay. <laughs> that could oh, okay. You're dating if you, because she lives in Germany. Okay, but you guys were, but you were having phone sex and sending dick pics. And, oh yeah. 
Yes. And was now, she sending you dick pics? Was she sending you dick pics? No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> would, no, no, I was sending a lot of dick pics. <laughs> of your own? Yeah. And she continued talking to you. Yeah. Now, have you have ever like. Was it half the, mass or full mass? <laughs> full, full. Was your, was your picture it's in the, the same was, thing. Was, trying to impress her? It always what, has to be full. Was your face in the, in the picture? Oh, no, I never have my picture in it. My uh, face in a dick pic. Was, oh, was so like, it could have been someone else's dick. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I used to do that. I used to send uh, girls pictures of random dudes' dicks because they're a lot bigger than mine. And so, you know, I was like, until you actually do with them, and they're like, wait, this is not the dick that you sent. She's like, did you get a tan? Dude. Yeah. You thought you'd get I a pity I, fuck out of it? <laughs> I know. Dude, I'm already here. Yeah. I'm on as well. I've done that. Uh, yeah. I was like, okay, I get a dick pic, and I send them this huge black cock. And then, <laughs> They'd be like, oh, no, really? I'm like, that's really mine. I have some weird disorder. I just kept going. I went bronzing, but it's only one hyperpigmentation, area. bitch. Get, look at it. I've never sent a dick pic in my life, uh, except to my wife. Uh, I've, I've sent one, and I... And to I, my wife? And I kind of... Really <laughs> <laughs> oh, why did she tell you? Yeah, who, who, who do you send yours to? Uh, a friend. Uh, yeah, Joaquin friend. Silva? <laughs> <laughs> no, a friend of mine, Stephanie, like... Well, we were like, we first like started hanging out and then, uh, we were kind of, I don't, I don't even know why I sent it. Honestly, she sent like me, she sent me a titty pic. So I was like, Oh, I'll send her a dick pic. You guys just friends. Yeah. We were just friends. We we didn't, we never hooked up or nothing. No. And then like immediately after I sent it, I was like, Oh fuck, I regret doing that. Oh, well, what did she respond back? Uh, nothing bad, but it was (laughs) like, thank you. Yeah. (laughs) I don't, I don't even actually remember what she responded this is why with. LOL. Like, this is why you have a, a, a day job. <laughs> good, thing, good thing you're a fighter. <laughs> good, thing, good thing you're an electrician. Good, that's, that's all right. That's okay. Now, now, um, if we win this fight, when we win this fight, we win. and win by knockout. Uh, you're, the last time you won your fight, you were in Australia, and you won, and you were so excited that you cursed everybody out in the, in the arena, and they beeped your entire acceptance speech. So I, I was really proud, but it didn't really do you much justice because no one could hear it. It was like, yeah. hey, I want to beep, 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 beep. Like, do you kind of regret doing that? or No, I mean, people read lips, and on the, on the fight pass, <laughs> on, on the fight pass, it actually is not bleeped out, so that's not too bad. Okay. But so, I, was, I thought I was going to get in trouble because in the back, uh, they're like, no cussing, we're on TV. Like, no, what exactly did you say? Uh, the first thing I yelled was, fuck ring rust. That was like the first thing I yelled, but I yelled that repeatedly a few times because I could just see all the little interviewers and all yeah. the people that were trying to like, Put that in Did my people head, think you know Ring I mean? Rust was like actual person? <laughs> Maybe I'm not sure. What commercial were you watching after I'm, that? <laughs> I'm not surprised because some people are, are straight retarded. <laughs> Who's Ring Rust and why do you want to beat him up so bad? Why do you hate this guy? So then, and then what? Then what did you say after that? Um, I said that, and then uh, something motherfucker. I honestly don't even remember. I'll see in red still. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I heard that. I'm like, I'm like, this is great, but I don't know if he's doing himself. But I, I was loving it, but <laughs> I could see why people. Now this time, after you win this fight, there was a lot of emotion going through me then because that was that was a, a well needed. You had nine uh, years knockout. off. Yeah, basically. I mean, right? I mean, was it four years off? Four, yeah, a little over four years. That was, I mean, I was like fucking dead to myself. The last think? fight was Kabalov. Before that. No, I fought Andrew Kwani. Yeah. Uh, I fought Andrew Kwani before that, and then Garrett Whiteley before that. I mean, that. Joe had banged two girls in that time. Uh, <laughs> so, With a knife to their throat. <laughs> so, th- no, this time, right? Now, are we going to actually call someone out if you win? Do you plan on doing that? I Honestly, can't, uh, I've been trying to call people out, but it's... It's fucking stupid, dude. But you're like, doing it on Twitter and you only have seven followers. I know. And, 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 but and all like seven of them are, know what's going on. Three of them are us. So, 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 so I mean, you didn't even know you had Twitter. You, you, so you're gonna have a big Don't stage. Me. You're gonna have a big stage now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So that, I want you to get ahead of yourself. I don't want to jinx you. But let's just say you, you win this fight. You knock the dude out because you got the fucking hands of a. And you're gonna come into that fight weighing 190 like you always do. And you're just gonna fucking pounce on this guy. Are we going to say, all right, you're 155. Do, do, we, do we call out Khabib? I'm honestly just going to... I'm honestly going to probably keep it general and tell every ah. top 10 pussy that if they want some, to come get some because those are the guys that I want to go after. Yeah, but, but you got to specifically... Felder. Well, why? I think that would be a fun fight. Because anytime, Felder. Felder. anytime someone says... I'll take it. whoever wants it can get it. <laughs> well, he's on the bench. Everybody <laughs> like yawn there. I you have to specifically call like even if it's five people, just even have like a list of like a like take it out of your your, your shoes or your, your I don't know what shoes. Call out Super Sage. You know, like, <laughs> I already tried. <laughs> They're protecting him for me. Yeah, I mean, but a list would would help you or like a uh, call out. I think so too, but like I've been honestly been talking shit to people on Twitter and trying to call people out, but. Like a lot of the top ten guys are fucking pussies. Like they're so afraid to lose their spot that they won't even like take any fight with someone who's unranked because of that. You know what I mean? And like it's 
Like honestly, what my in my head, I'm just gonna fucking run through these these douchebags until they give me someone that can't hide from me anymore. You know yeah. what I mean? Like Al, like Al's been dodging me since the Ultimate Fighter, and you know, last time on the show, what did he say? Oh, I'm retired. Leave me alone. Like you yeah. know what I mean? He's being such a bitch about it. Gaethje. Gaethje, yeah, that would be a cool fight. I like Gaethje to fight him. Gaethje would be. Oh my god, yeah. he's a tough dude, but I'd wear him out. What about Kevin Lee? Here's, here's I would like to fight Kevin Lee too. Actually, oh, yeah, let me okay. see that. Let me see that. All right, uh, let's pick see. names. Yes. <clears throat> well, just call it Engano. <laughs> I want who's the that? winner of Steve Bain and Gano. <laughs> who's that big beastly chick that like beats up on the sixty year old ladies? Gabby Garcia. Gabby Garcia. Oh, yeah, that chick. Yeah, call out Gabby. <laughs> you, know, you don't want that trouble. <laughs> I don't want to be like her. Uh, I'll fight Gainthy. I'd like to fight Poirier. I'll fight Kevin Lee. Um, I would love to fight Diaz. Uh, Michael John. Well, Michael Johnson went to forty five. Nate Diaz sweepstakes. I think the Nate Diaz is definitely going to happen. He probably won't fight anyone unless he gets paid millions. You got now, a better right? chance winning Publishers Clearinghouse than getting Nate Diaz. And not that I don't think you Nate can beat Diaz. Nate Diaz. I just think that Nate Diaz is going to wants to fight. Like now they're talking about boxing. I, I would yeah. like to. I would like to fight Eddie Alvarez too. Honestly, that would be great. Would be I think great. that. So would why don't you call fight. Eddie Alvarez? But I'm saying even if you call Eddie Alvarez after your fight, Eddie Alvarez, quit ducking me. Like, like, is he going to take it, though? You know what I mean? He might like, not, concerts. but then someone else might say, I'll fight you. It'll get your name out there. And I'll take it. Now, is your fight on Fight Pass or prelims? I have no idea. All right. So who's on? let's look at this car right here. It's uh, the uh, Jacare versus Brunson 2. It's a good or car. Or 3, actually. It's a, yes. okay. yeah, it's 2, two in two. the UFC, but 3 total. Uh, no. Right? Because no, no, weren't no. they one and one with each other? No, no. no. Brunson. Uh, oh, I thought they fought twice already. No, Brunson said he'd never been hit that hard before he fought him. Oh, shit. Uh, this card is pretty fucking stacked. All right, let's, let's talk about this, far, this card right here. Uh, UFC on. The more stacked it is, the Box 27. Home, home, sure. <laughs> it's on Fox. All right, so we got Jacare Brunson. I'm going to be on TV. OSP Mom. versus uh, Latifi. Damn. Yep. Um, I got. If, if Latifi loses by um, that, whatever, Von, Von Flucho. Flucho, the St. Prucho. Yeah, I'm actually going to. That's it. Andre on here, Fili. it shows that I'm on the, uh, pre, on the prelims on TV, not the Fight Pass, but the prelims. Feely versus Bernie. They haven't updated yet. There's no. There's no lineup yet. Uh, Masad, oh, okay. Eric Coach versus Bobby Green. That's that's a hell of a fight. Depends on what Bobby Green shows up, right? Yeah. Gre Gregor Gillespie, that kid's amazing, versus Ronaldo. Yeah, he's undefeated too, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah. The Gift. Uh, Bermudez is fighting Feely. Caitlin's on that card. Caitlin Chukuchian, I like Chukagan. her. I like her. Uh, Randa Marcos versus Jonah Lima. That's, that's a good a, card. That's a good fight. Vince Pichel versus, you're fighting a shadow. The guy doesn't have a thing. Oh, it's got his face on here. Oh, uh, there. Uh, George Sullivan versus Nico Price. Sullivan's the guy that got busted for pop for stuff, right? And then he was out for a couple yeah. of years. Versus Nico Price. That's the guy that beat Allen. Justine Kish versus G. She's a girl who shit herself. That guy, Nico Price, kind of looks like the V from Vendetta guy. I don't know why, but his face just makes me feel Oh, dude. She, imagine that girl. She, last time she fought, she shit, her, she shit the octagon. Oh, that's the chick? Yeah. She's the Ooh. one that got the rule instated now that if you shit, piss, or throw up in the octagon, it's an automatic TKO loss. Wow. But it says that Really? You, yeah. Wow. But it says that you're the next fight. So if she shits herself, your face is going into that poop, dude. You better keep it standing. I mean, not my face. It's going to be so <laughs> they, haven't, they haven't set a, a lineup yet for the card because uh. you said he was on prelims. But hey, see, look, we're real 10 and 1 on here. The UFC says we're both 10 and 1. Uh, this is a good card. This is, is a really a good, good card. card. It's in North Carolina. Yep. Charlotte. It's probably going to be cold as feely. shit out there, too. Now, the last time you went to Australia, you went... It was New Zealand. New Zealand. You went a week early. You were airbnb it. You had no place to live. You were homeless. And you were showing up at gyms. People were like, who the fuck's this guy? <laughs> is this the plan again in North Carolina? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> really? I just like to wing it. You know what I mean? When are you going to North Carolina? I'm, I'm actually leaving to go up to the 23rd. You got your so flight that already? Tuesday. Yeah, I got my flight and everything. I do have Airbnb. I have an Airbnb that's right around the corner from the uh, arena. Um, They're not putting you in a hotel? They are, but I don't like to be in the hotel because I don't like to be around all that shit. You know what I mean? Like, I like to be separated and away from stuff so I can clear my head. I honestly sometimes don't even like to be with my coaches because they try to put too much bullshit in my head before the fight. You know what I mean? Like, you got to do this. You got to do that. And it's like, shut the fuck up. It's the week of the fight. Let me clear my head. What okay. if you're main card and they do media obligations? You have to stay in the hotel. You'd still just... I still won't stay there. I'll just I'll show up when they need me there. What uh now is there a gym you plan on going to while you're there? Yeah, actually, uh there is a gym I'm gonna go to. Curves. Let me see where I'm not sure. <laughs> Wait, where? Curves? <laughs> yeah, curves. Uh, depends He's lining up some pussy for after thing. the fight. Are you gonna soccer moms? Now are you gonna be uh on Bumble or Tinder in North Carolina? Because those chicks will fucking bang you in a heartbeat. No, I actually don't even have that and I'm I'm not really like a big website person like that, like a dating website kind of person. Yeah, you were born in the wrong. You should have been born in like the like the. You would have been Vikings. a Viking. Yeah, yeah you would have been a great Viking, dude. <laughs> or like a Spartan. He's or such something. a man's man, this dude. He's such a he's like a tough he guy. He fixes electricity to metal music every night on Instagram. Yeah, it's he's no. Crazy. He's got like he's got no social media. He doesn't care. He fights. 
Now here it is. It's in Charlotte. This guy, his name's Duck Off Domo. <laughs> He says, I'm more than more than happy to accommodate you. He's got a sauna, full cage, full ring, nice. etc. So he says, I'm, I'm cool. Just hit him up. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, tonight at the Dime Bar, Tyron Woodley's performing. Oh, is he? Uh, uh, yeah. He's getting with, comedy, huh? Uh, yeah. That shoulder must be really fucked up. Do you want to you <laughs> <laughs> come to the show? See Tyron Woodley do comedy? Kind of, but is he going to be good? Is he, is he funny? He's, like, he's never dude, done I, it before. He's never done it before. He hasn't? No. no. Oh, fuck, man. you got to see it. This could be a requirement. What time, what time is he going on? At around 8.30, 8.45. Oh, fuck. Wow, what do you got to do? I have training at 7. Dude, what's more important? Uh, mean, this, training? Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, are, you, are, you, are you making decent money for this fight? Yeah. Um, they actually just doubled my contract, so I'm at like 15 and 15 for my fight, plus the Reebok and bonuses and other such like that. So okay. I'm making out pretty good. Uh, before, I was... I was uh, I wasn't making that you know what I mean I wasn't I don't want to say I wasn't making shit but I mean for what it is I make good enough money you know what I mean I'm not really a complainer I'm not like a little gold digging whore so like whatever they're paying for beating people up I'm happy with because I did it for fucking what 25 years of my life for free before yeah. I even started fighting so right it's just fun for me you actually. For War Machine, right? No, no, I, I didn't personally fight him myself because he was <laughs> juiced out of his fucking mind and I was a little, little kid. I was normal at that time. Okay, so this is you. So you're, you're in high school. What, you're, uh, what grade are you in? Um, I honestly don't even remember. Maybe ninth grade or ninth 10th grade. grade. Okay. It, it might have honestly been junior high too. I don't really know for sure. But you had heard I that War Machine's friend was fighting your friend. Yeah, so I had a friend who was fighting one of his friends and we were basically the skater punks versus the jocks. You know what I mean? That was like the rivalry that we had back in the day. So my buddy Sal is fighting this guy. And then um, you got it like a, a behind a schoolyard or? Oh, it's it's in a park in a, there was like a cul-de-sac with a park. It's called May, Mayfair Park, I want to say it was, um, in Simi. And it's in a cul-de-sac, kind of a secluded park where you can't really, like no one can hear you scream basically is that kind of park. Right. <laughs> like, like, a, like a rape park or something? Yeah, it's All a right. rape park, rape, very rapey park. Right. So uh, my buddy Sal is fighting this guy. He ends up on, they end up on the ground. My buddy Sal ends up on top, kind of hit, like taking advantage of this deer a little bit. Cope runs in, who's War Machine. That his real name is John Copenhaver. Yep. He runs up, um, hits Sal. Sal falls over and then stomps on Sal's head. So where I was standing, there was a little brick, a little brick wall. So I was like, shit, I fucking grab one of those bricks and was like, fuck that, because I was gonna like go close enough for him to get a hold of me. So I fucking yeah. threw that brick at his ass. Yeah. And then he immediately turned around and I just fucking Did took you hit off him with running. The brick? Yeah, but it just bounced off him like it was a fucking balloon, dude. It was pretty crazy. And he took off running. Yeah, and then like a lot of people took off running because that dude was he was like on steroids and in high school he was I want to say two hundred thirty pounds fucking yoked out of his mind like was he, was huge. he a popular kid? Did people like him? No, or? no one liked him. Like till this day, no one really likes him. But yeah, of course he he was you know what I mean he was one of those guys that you kept on your side because you were afraid that if he wasn't you like you'd be next. You what know a, what I mean? a waste, man! That guy. Uh, yeah. What a what a I mean he actually, it is had, sad. He actually had talent, uh, but it, it is sad. But unfortunately, like he let his life get to him and, and alter his. His yeah. thought process. Yeah, yeah. He has been through a lot, but uh, who, who, any, any other famous people who went to Simi Valley? I don't know. Or infamous? Not that I know of. I just, mean, just so him. You're, so you're I'm like, only I'm only Simi famous for beating up people, and now I'm in the UFC fighting. You're so like you're it. like the good one who came out of Simi Valley. Yeah, yeah. I haven't beaten any bitches up yet, so I'm still I'm All still right. in the running. <laughs> that's not exactly the best thing you want to say, but yes. <laughs> I, yeah, right. Yeah, of course. No, nobody's getting. No, they're not bitches. But okay. Yeah. Anyway, so. Vince Pichel. Very nice ladies. Yes. Uh, Vince Pichel got this fight coming up. I could already tell in your demeanor, you, you're, you're less happy. Uh, <laughs> you, look, you, look, you look way more focused. Yeah, I'm kind of in an asshole mood today. You, you, I can tell you're in an asshole mood. I like it, though. Uh, you're probably a little hungry. Yeah, I'm always hungry. I just ate my salmon and my broccoli with no. a little juice. So right. now, that's uh, all I get for a little bit. Now, did you and Rowdy Beck ever get together? No. Actually, I've never, I've never actually got to meet her face-to-face. Just... Uh, over the phone, I think on the podcast a couple uh, times, but that was like it. You guys, you would do well. I know, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I do feel like we do have kind of the same personality, like the, I game. Think you, the I same think asshole you need, personality you need, uh, at times. Have, have you dated, ever dated a fighter? No, I haven't hmm. actually. Um, I think I, I bang more fighters than you than you have. That's crazy. Probably, yeah. Wow. I've well, maybe how many have you banged? Uh, <laughs> Your mouth's wife. Professionals, uh, <laughs> professional fighters, uh, two. Damn, you have beat me because I only got one under my belt. Oh, what? <laughs> you won? Who, who, who? I only have one and I won. <laughs> who's, who's the one that you have banged? Uh, I probably shouldn't say. Mike but... Pierce? <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn, dude. Wow. No, I'm not in the dreadlocks. 
Who? Oh, is that Mike Pierce? Oh no, that's Mike. Mike. Uh, wait, is that Mike Pierce? No, Mike Pierce is Mike. Uh, uh, Mike Pierce was the one that has his, had his like knee torn out by Husamar Paharis and was almost never seen oh, again. Oh shit! No, not him. Who's the Who's the guy that just lost to? Um, All right, quit changing the subject. Mike Perry. So, so, Perry. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, Perry. Mike, Mike, Mike Perry. That's who I was thinking of. Mike Perry. So who's the fighter that you banged? Uh, the initials are JD. JD. Junior uh, Dos Santos. Junior Dos Santos. Uh, yeah. It's JDS. Jessamyn Duke. Oh. Wow. That's 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 a she's like a hot one. That's a, that's, that's a model girl. Yeah, right there. she's super. She is super adorable too, and like a really cool chick. Yeah, but it just kind of happened. Okay, was, so one question then: What does it say on her pussy? Because she has a tattoo down there that nobody's been able to tell since the pics were released. It says cyborg. It's the same one you got. <laughs> no, it's one on each side. It says stop graphing me, CB. I'm trying to take a shit. Uh, <laughs> I don't actually remember. Oh. I don't think she had tattoos at the time. Uh, I don't think or that was just my dude. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, good for you. That's, that's, a, really that's, that's, a, that's a very pretty girl right there. Yeah, she is. She's a super cool chick too. And I mean, yeah. it is what it is. We just hooked up. Yeah, that's good it. for you. That's I, I, no, 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 no feelings involved. No. Oh. Hmm. No. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's hard it's, to. It's it's hard to catch feelings when you don't have any. <laughs> that should be your T-shirt. <laughs> it's hard to catch feelings when you don't have any. That's a hilarious. <laughs> I would buy that shirt. This for show. <laughs> it's hard to catch feeling. You don't have any. <laughs> I like it. I like uh, it. I know. I just say stupid shit like that, too. Yeah. People but, ask me, oh, what's your favorite color? And I just black like my soul. I think the most famous guy I ever banged was a uh, playmate, but I banged her uh, when she was in her 50s. So she was so? like she was like black and white playboy. Back Still counts. Yeah. Yeah. It counts. Back when she had like a hairy beef. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. Like, there's a Did whole generation of it? kids that actually won't uh, know what it's like to be around girls with hairy vaginas. You know, I actually tell girls I prefer it. Really? Do you? Yeah. I don't mind a little hair, but if it's like out of control, I don't, I don't like it. Being out. <laughs> if, it if it's groomed, it's cool. I, I don't mind it. Wait, how do you how how do you tell girls to like? <laughs> yeah. so, what, how, how does this happen? You're like you're 14. Let hey, it go. Nice to meet you. How are you? I hope you have a giant bush. <laughs> Yeah, close, I, I hope you about hey Bush. What's your name? Like, is, this, is this what you lead with on Tinder? Well, we, it starts. That's like, his Tinder name. It starts like by saying, or by telling a girl like, "Yo, baby, you want to come over tonight? My parents are gone." And then she, <laughs> we get the basement to ourselves. Yeah. Is that what you tell girls <laughs> in middle school? <laughs> oh fuck! Oh my god! All right, so you, okay, so, so you they, said, then she'll say something like, "Oh, I, have, I haven't shaved yet. I don't know if I can come." Then I say, "Don't worry, baby. I, I prefer you not to shave." <laughs> what is this? The worst porn of all time? Like, <laughs> Wait, after actually, they leave, they didn't know they came. Wait, this actually <laughs> happens? You say, hey, come over. My my parents aren't home. Yeah. Now, I, at this point, they're not just unfriending you or How old blocking are you? you. I'm 21. But now, these girls are, what, 18, 19, 20? 15. Uh, I hope so. so. I would think anyone over the age of 23 would be like, why do you live with your parents? Oh, you know what? I'm glad you mentioned that. I just had a girl come over. I can't believe I forgot this, dude. I had a girl come over last weekend, dude. <laughs> yeah. She's 25 years old. Oh, wow. damn. Nice. You know up in the world. You, you still haven't see? beat the 55 year old that got in the car accident outside the ha ha oh yeah he banged, he got in a car accident and then banged her <laughs> what in his that car. is awesome I think she might have slept in a coma all right, all right, okay, she so. was still unconscious as long as she's warm it's okay I think there was more damage. He couldn't, he couldn't finish because they came over to ask for insurance. Like, like the uh, sex actually uh, lasted way more damage than the accident. <laughs> <laughs> lasted longer too. Oh Wait, God. so okay, so you said to the twenty-five-year-old, "Hey, my parents aren't home." Yeah, she came over. Yeah, and I, she thinks she was babysitting. Um, <laughs> the dude, I don't know, but she was kind of. The whole night was just strange because you can tell she's kind of awkward, kind of antisocial. We were sitting there. We were just watching uh, TV. And what were you like, watching? The uh, Santa Claus movie again? No. <laughs> that That's was, what you that watched last time. time. A yeah. movie entitled Those Are Breaks on the Rape Train. <laughs> no, I forgot we were watching, but you know, I hate watching movies with a girl. because like, You just want to get to the point, dude. So I'm like, you want to go in my room and play around or whatever? You said play around? You, have to, that's, you know what? You got to pick your choice of movies. You got to always watch a movie with a sex scene in it. And then it's like, oh, what's up? Is that what you do? Yeah. Just watch yeah. Game he works, works he every time. on porn and he's like, let's, let's reenact. Is that, is that what happened with Jessamine? Did you watch movie with a sex scene? No, we just got hammered and, and we're like, fuck it. It was bang. Okay. Oh, nice. All right. All right. Take this advice, Joe. <clears throat> so she's, she's, she's in there sitting on my bed. I have all the lights off. I have a couple candles. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you want to do? And she's like, I don't know. Because, you know, I'm not getting a very sexual vibe off of her at all. Okay. So I'm like, you want to play with the Ouija board? <laughs> <laughs> and what did she you say? creepy fuck. Why do you have a Ouija board? All right, go on. Yeah, she's, why like, Ouija she's like, uh, I don't even believe in ghosts or Ouija boards. I'm like, are you sure? We can, just, we can try it. And she's like, she's yeah, like, I'm not five. Yeah, well, there's so many more questions <laughs> than why does he have Should a Ouija board. Should ask her about dragons. <laughs> Should ask her if she like dragons. 
dragging these nuts. So <laughs> I, go on. So I bust out the Ouija board. I'm playing it in the dark, and of course, I'm I'm just moving that. Well, you're shit. like one of my parents coming home. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, you know, I'm moving the little planchette thing, that little thing with like the hole of the glass. I'm moving it, and she doesn't know it's me. And you're like, "What? Blo- I'm giving you're gonna get a blowjob? Did you spell that out? No, that's uh, a good idea though. Oh, uh, go on. So I so I move the thing. I move the thing to uh, spell out because we're like, "All right, is there anybody there? What is your name?" And I made it spell out Ray R A Y. Right. And we're like, "What the fuck? Some dude named Ray Parker?" And he's saying Ghostbusters. All right, go on. And then I'm like, right, Romano. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, where are you from? And I put I put Dallas in there. Yeah, and I put how old are you? And I put sixteen. And she started to get freaked out. And I'm like, all right, I'm like, I'm, I'm acting freaked out too. I'm like, this is crazy. This never happened to me before. And so we put the Ouija board away. And she's googling Ray Dallas sixteen. And this article comes up of a little girl whose last name was Ray. It was like some something Ray. And she was murdered wow, you in Dallas. Out good. You and she out was really sixteen good. years old, dude. Wow. So she started to freak the fuck out. Right. And then we just cut a little bit. I tried to. I tried, <laughs> I tried to. I tried my best to like. To Has make her actually, super horned up, I was grabbing her ass. Wait, wait, wait this didn't work? <laughs> yeah, I thought that was the, the Ouija board didn't get girls wet? Yeah. Not surprised, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And so I'd grab her ass and she just like whipped my hands away. She's like, no, I'm ticklish. Hey, stop. All right. So, Why did it sound like Mickey Mouse? <laughs> I, I can't do a good girl impression. But, <laughs> You're kidding. Yeah. All right, I mean, go she on. Was like, so grab my ass. <laughs> and she's like six foot three, too. She's taller than me, dude. She's huge. Oh, damn. She's she Gabby Garcia. Well, I don't know. I didn't Jay get a feel Amazonian. nothing. I didn't get no action, dude. How, how big were her hands? <laughs> How hairy were her Probably hands? A little bit smaller than mine. Oh, okay, but you have big hands. Yeah, I do. I st- kind of. Could she palm a basketball? You think? Probably. I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> God, right. it was Lisa Leslie so from they, the Los Angeles they, Sparks. So you think this might have been a guy? <laughs> no, but the, the most action I got was <laughs> it was so weird. I slid my hands into her yoga pants. I was grabbing her ass cheeks, oh and then she's like. You know, I gotta go. I gotta go. I'm going skiing tomorrow. I should leave. And I'm like, all right. Hmm. And then she just left, <laughs> dude. That was that's, weird. Yeah, that was a really crazy. riveting story. Wow, that's that's a that's a cra- amazing. Wow, that's I've learned a lot. Yeah. Hopefully, we had enough memory card for that. We learned. Uh, <laughs> I hope I never have a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> And if you do, <laughs> keep him away. Keep him away. <laughs> Actually, keep him near her so she knows what to look for. I'm going to play this for her every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want to know about the birds and the bees? Well, let me show you my podcast. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Yeah. That's, all right. Well, look. Hey, man. Look, you, you gotta keep trying. There's, there's a girl out there for you. Yeah. Uh, you know, are, are you looking for a girlfriend or? Yeah, because I'm tired of us, you know, getting in all kinds of trouble on Tinder. I'd like to settle down, have a relationship. That's why I'm hoping this girl. I mean, I don't really want to go to church with her for a first date. Yeah, <laughs> might as well. I mean, I might as well just try it out. That's yeah. awkward. I feel Is like it near a school? Just being in churches. I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm, if it's near a school, say you went to church and then just take her to like the don't bring the Ouija board to church. Yeah, or the machete. <laughs> or the machete. They yeah. might frown on that. Who's here? <laughs> Satan. <laughs> All right, this isn't going where I thought. Oh, Christ compels you. <laughs> Does it, oh, Vince? Man. Does it compel me? <laughs> so, so Vince Michelle, now you're selling T-shirts, right? Yes, I am. Where I sell you? T-shirts to pay for the flights for my coaches to fly them out to my fights. Okay, now where can we get these T-shirts? Uh, you can get them on my website, uh, which is fromhellpshell.com, or you can get them on the theuniondesigns.com. What if I want you to sign a T-shirt? Um, if you want me to sign one... Is it more? No, I mean I'm just trying to figure out how I'd work that out because I mean oh, I can get like, yeah, I, yeah. I could sign him no I could sign him and then do it because it's my friend that does it you know what I mean but yeah, I'm just yeah. having him take care of that uh, because so that's, 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 more, that's more effort but I yeah. want a from Hell Michelle T-shirt you're one of your 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 manager sent me uh, uh, the guy who managed Eric Anders sent me a T-shirt one of mine. Uh, no, he sent me. Oh, one of his. It says your boy. <laughs> he oh, said, nice. your manager, <laughs> and then said his manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that yeah. kind of went. But, oh, that's cool. Yeah, you I met, got you. I like that guy. The guy from uh, Iridium. Yeah, Jason. Jason House. He's yeah, actually he, a really cool, dude. He has sponsored my wrestling team. Oh, did he? Yeah, is he the one whose oh, partner nice. is MC Hammer? No, I don't think that's him. But he's a nice guy. And he's oh, a maybe manager, that's Lex McMahon. And he's actually one of those guys that you're like, man, this guy's not a scumbag. Which in this business, it's hard to meet those guys. It really he's fucking so, is, dude. So, uh, and I asked him, I go, how come no one wants to fight Vince? And he's like, Vince hits so fucking hard. He's like, people don't want to. There's not enough to get out of that. They're like, he, he's just so big, and it's the people guys are scared of you. Yeah, I'm honestly pretty huge for the weight class. Like, I, I've only seen one guy that's bigger than me in the weight class, and it's uh, what's the Glacian T-Bow? Is it Glacian T-Bow that dude? Well, James Vick's pretty big. He's big, but he's tall. Um, but I like I'm, I'm shorter than him, but I'm like brick I wa- yeah, I walk around just under 200 pounds typically. Uh, well, Kevin and, Lee also is a 190. He walks around 190, 195. Oh, does he? Yeah, yeah, he's a big dude. But like when I so when I cut weight and I fight again, I'm back up to 180, 185 easily. 
Yeah. And so when I'm in there, like it's, and I get a hold of someone, it's like throwing around little kids. Your last fight, you knocked the guy out with a jab. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, that was, like you flicked his ear, and now the fight was <laughs> the, the fight was over. It's like you all right, you all right. <laughs> that, that was crazy. But, yeah. but but he's gonna know that this guy, this yeah. guy you're fighting is gonna know your, about your power. Like I think the the words out. So we gotta go not go head hunting, right? Or is that? Yeah, no, and I'm I'm honestly not really relying too much on my power because I I know I have a lot of power, and if I connect with someone, they're gonna go down. So I've been more realizing on being fast, being fluid, and just loose out there. You know what I mean? And that's how I was with Damien when I fought Damien. Are we, are we worried about like taking him down and having him go for some triangle or? No, I mean I'm I'm sure he's gonna threaten me a couple times, and I might be in a little bit of danger, but I don't feel like it's anything that I'm not gonna be able to handle. Um, I know once I hit him though, he's definitely not going to want to get into an exchange match with me. Like, even though he has power, I know I have a good amount of range on him, um, height and you know what I mean? Like most guys, once I hit him and their eyes cross that time, like they're a little timid to come in on me. Yep. 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 All right. So that, so uh, this guy goes for heel hooks or anything. Are you, are you, are you prepared for all that shit? I'm, I'm prepared for everything. Um, like I said, I, I practice everything. If whatever he throws at me, I'm going to have something. I'm going to have a rebuttal for. Nice. And his rebuttal to my rebuttal, I'm going to have another one for that too. Now you got to be like, uh, go Duke or go Tar Heels. Like, you, you, gotta, like, you really got to pander to this North Carolina. <laughs> just fucking walk out there and just go, woo! <laughs> I, I had no fucking clue what teams those were huge. Memorize <laughs> Flair's style and profile and promo and just hit that. <laughs> well, listen. I'm such a shitty like sports fan. I'll even pay attention to my own sport, honestly. Yeah, I, I, that's true. That's true. Well, listen, Vince. It was an honor to have you. I know you're busy. You know you got to train. Thank you. Thank you. Train you. tonight. If you can make yeah. Tyron Woodley's stand-up comedy. Does he just go on at 8:30 or is it later like shows? 8:45. If like, there's a later show, I can make it. No, it goes. From, it starts at eight. I told him he's gonna go on third or fourth. Uh, which is probably around 8 30, 8 45. And he's never done it before? Have never. you read his jokes? No. No. I don't want to read his jokes. I mean, I. I <laughs> no, not that I don't want to read his jokes. I just. Yeah, it's like so, someone who never had a fight before. You're like, oh, there's so CM much. CM Punk. There's so much to go over. You know, they'd like to, and anything that I can tell him would probably just fuck him up. Like, yeah, he's better true. off just dealing with his, his own instincts. Let him do it his own way, yeah. And then, and then whatever happens, happens. You know? And he's a world champion. What has he got? Nothing, nothing to lose. And the That's place true. only holds 30 people. It's not like yeah. he's going to come out of Square Garden, you know, and it's like... Would you be it. surprised if Colby shows up? <laughs> that, would be, that would be the best thing ever. Oh, my God. Well, the part of me was him? like, let's call TMZ. I can get everyone. But I'm like, I don't want to do that to him. You know, I, I, don't, no. I don't even want to ask him, should I call TMZ? Because what if he bombs and TMZ comes and then they film it and then I'm an asshole for, for setting him up like that. So I, as much as it'd be good press for the room, I'm like, eh. You know, I'm not going to do that, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> and so. if he kills, just fucking advertise the shit out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Somebody needs to film this. Like, you don't have to release it, but somebody needs to film this, like his stand-up debut. Because if he's amazing, you release it. If he's not good, fucking help him, sh- like, show him what he could do better. If he bombs, sell the footage to Colby Covington, dude. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's probably the first good idea you've ever had in your life. <laughs> <laughs> but I would never do that. There's actually a lot of fighters that are like doing comedy now, huh? I know. Now it's, uh, it's Brendan Schaub does comedy. Leslie Smith does comedy. Dean Thomas does comedy. Eve, Eve, Eve does comedy. Tyron. Yeah, Eve Tyron does How comedy. How did Eve do that night? I wanted to go to He's much getting Eve. much better. Is He's he? actually getting good. I, wanted to, I like Eve. He's a really cool dude. Mayhem did comedy, sort of. Uh, Mayhem's uh, life, life is comedy. Life? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, he went up there and just said the N-word 15 times in a row. In Didn't a he almost get in a fight because no of that? Yeah, yeah. a room full of black people. And, uh, and then I Did was, he throw that hard R out? I, yeah, oh I, maybe. My God. And, I, and then he heard making animal noises. And he I was wonders like, why Uriah Hall punched him in the face in a club. <laughs> and then, and then I, I was lighting him, and he actually was likable. People actually liked what he was doing, but I think he was doing a way with like... And then someone threatened to shoot him. Uh, but then, but then I, I'm sitting there with Jason Ellis, and I'm like, Ellis, can you get him off? He goes... I, he goes, why don't you get him off? And I just tore my ACL. And I'm like, yeah, but you train. He goes, and I've trained well enough to know I'm not getting him off. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Jason might take getting him off a little bit differently. Yeah. yeah that's funny, too. Uh, I like it. So huh. CB Gold uh, on a roll today. Listen. Uh, that's why I take you, weeks off. Yeah. <laughs> got to refresh him. Joe, what do you got coming up? <clears throat> I got a bunch of YouTube videos in the works. Nice. Are you still doing stand up? Yeah, just like, not like any big shows. I still just do No, I don't mean you getting off the chair right now. I mean, like, you actually. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that was great, CB. That's, t- t- take six weeks off, please. All right, okay, all right. All right. Do There's another six weeks. YouTube, Wean Dog TV, Twitter, at the Wean Dog, Instagram, at the Wean Dog. Shout what, out. What, what's on Wean Dog TV? Yeah, how, how do you spell that, by the way? It's W E E N D A W G. Wean, oh, Wean, like Wiener? No, it's just like Wean Dog. I don't know. Like that's like short for wiener, isn't not it? Not a real word. Like no, okay, W E E N, not E I N. But okay, so yeah. what could so what do I see on Wee Dog TV? 
We got some scary videos up there, some countdown videos. I want to transition. Like you having sex? <laughs> <laughs> you spinning no, game? No, terrifying. No. But yeah, I want to transition to more like vlogging stuff. Okay. You know? Nice. Are you going to start your own Ghost Hunter show? Hell yeah, dude. Ghosts, Bigfoot, uh, Sam Squanches. Oh, sorry. Sam Ghost uh, Hunters. <laughs> uh, logic. You need some logic. Logic. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, CB, what do we got? <laughs> um, not a whole lot. Still a what's we working in. What yeah. was there? Uh, chocolate chip cookies yeah, yeah. So that I ate before you got here because so I knew glad. you were cutting weight. But we have a grand reopening, right? Yeah, so Graffiti Pals Tattoo, it's doing well. We got three artists in the building now, filled up all our stations. Three incredible artists. Um, January 27th is our grand reopening party. It's the same day as Vince's fight. Where is this uh, um, tattoo parlor? It's on Lancashire, 4427 Lancashire Boulevard, North Hollywood. California, for anybody else who asks. You guys have Instagram and everything already, um, too? We have, yeah, we have Instagram, Graffiti Palace Tattoo, Twitter, Graffiti Palace Tattoo, Facebook, same thing. And who did your um, cyborg tattoo? You got it there? I've only had one artist ever tattoo me. It's the same guy. My whole, He's my he, head he artist. Cy- you know, he has five McGregor tattoos. Yeah. And he's got a cyborg Six. tattoo. I don't need a cyborg tattoo. Where's your, where's your cyborg tattoo? I got it back here. It says, oh, nice. uh, it says, uh, it says Cyborg, UFC champ, and then PTC and Ruka because that's what she trains. But yeah, so we have the grand reopening January 27th, Saturday, 7 o'clock. Um, it's going to be an awesome night. A lot of people, uh, food, drinks, and uh, there might even be some insanity happening. Any discounts? Not for you. <laughs> 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 Fucking right. go to somebody else's shop for hey, a discount whore. tattoo. <laughs> no, if you come in and mention roasted or MMA roasted, we'll give you 10% off no matter what the tattoo is. Nice. Uh, uh, Vince, what, what if uh, the tattoo is I hate CB gold? We, I might Vince. have it done for free. Oh, nice. <laughs> All right, Vince, what do you got? I got my fight coming up January 27th, Charlotte, North Carolina. And that's about it. I'm a fucking loser. No, you're not. You're, you're not. <laughs> Until January 27th Until when afterwards. you knock this fucking guy's head off. Yeah. Call out MMA Roasted. And <laughs> Adam Hunter, you're dead. <laughs> Call out <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, you, but we be the first guy to give MMA Roasted a shout out in the octagon. Everyone says that they were going to do it. No one ever did it. What's the name said he was definitely going to do it? Uh, Bubba? No, uh, the, the, ch- the champ, the guy. Uh, he said he'd be the Garbrandt. He, Garbrandt promised me he would he would do it. Oh, you know what? I'll do it. Really? If if I get if I get oh. camera time if I get camera time after my fight after I knock this dude out I promise I'll give a shout out to M. May Rosen. That is the but if you win by ever. decision, not a chance. Yeah, probably not because they probably won't let me go on camera after that. He's gonna do it. <laughs> CB. Right, so. no, he's gonna knock him out. I'm I might have to concerned. do it in the back in the interview with that. There's no, no one three sees. rounds. <laughs> we can put right. that in the intro. Okay, for if we do like a new intro song, we can put that in the intro. Yeah, no, we I'm, need I'm, I'm posting that on like my on like Instagram, so everyone sees that. All right, <laughs> I'm just gonna get abused if I don't do it. And about one percent of those people are gonna know who Vince is. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. Vince is the man. And uh, the other half everyone are gonna who, care. Everyone who loves MMA roasted loves Vince. Um, Fucking better. So tomorrow night I'm at the laugh. Tonight I'm at the Dime Bar with Tyron Woodley. Tomorrow night I'm at the Laugh Factory uh, with John Henson, who used to host Talk Soup. Very, very funny guy. Um, it's uh, shows at 7.45. Hit me up for tickets. This Thursday... Is that show still around? Talk Soup? No. Um, <laughs> this Thursday to Sunday, I'm at the Arizona in Scottsdale at the House of Comedy. A lot of fighters are going to come to those fights. I'm excited to see John Crouch and David Michaud and Lauren Murphy and all the... All the the lab, MMA lab people are coming. And then I invited, what's his name? Shannon Rich, but he's fighting in Russia uh, that night. Uh, so, and then next... On the AB, AB, whatever? I don't know what Shannon Rich is fighting. It's probably someone's backyard. Uh, and then <laughs> Seattle, Washington. I'm recording my new CD at the Comedy Underground. That's uh, Thursday, the, January 18th to the, to the 22nd. Be prepared. And then Calgary, Alberta, the 24th to the 29th. And then I am in Vegas. No, then I'm in uh, Apple Valley. And uh, yeah, I'm at the South Point Casino March 2nd. So Friday, March 2nd, before UFC 122, right? I'll be there at 12.30 at night. Well, listen, thank you, Vince. Thank you, Michael Johnson. Thank you. Thank you, CB. Thank you, my man, Ween Dogs. Uh, take care and have a great week. Traps on some traps. Traps on some traps. Traps on some traps. Sans to hook him, Dorpotan. Tather stolt and Dorpotaboro. Tather stolt and Dorpotaboro.